disclosure of pecuniary interest. We have none at this time. If at some point throughout the meeting, uh, committee members, if you feel you have a pecuniary interest, please let us know. We'll record it uh, accordingly for the records. Under item number three, deputations, petitions, and public meetings, we have none. Item number four, we have unfinished business. You can see the list there. Any questions or comments on the unfinished business? Seeing none, moving on to item number five, new business. <coughs> item number five, a beachfront management board, September 14, 2017. We do have a motion moved by Councillor Stockwell. So, uh, sorry, moved by Councillor Stockwell, seconded by Councillor Smith. The committee of the whole of council received the September 14, 2017 Beachfront Management Board meeting. Minutes from the Chief Administrative Officer as circulated. Questions or comments on this? Seeing none, Madam Deputy Clerk. Thank you, Your Worship. With the motion having been read, we'll call for the vote. Councillor Belanger? In favor. Deputy Mayor Bipolci? In favor. Councillor Gray? In favor. Councillor Ego? In favor. Councillor Smith? In favor. Councillor Stockwell? In favor. Mayor Smith? In favor. The vote is seven in favor and zero opposed. The motion is carried. Thank you. Moving on to item 7B, Beachfront Management Board once again, moved by Councillor Stockwell and seconded by Councillor Smith, the Committee of the Whole of Council received the September 28, 2017 Beachfront Board Management Board meeting minutes from the Chief Administrative Officer as circulated. Questions or comments on this? Seeing none, Madam Deputy Clerk. With the motion having been read, we'll call for the vote. Councillor Belanger? In favor. Deputy Mayor Bipolci? In favor. Councillor Bray? In favor. Councillor Eagle? In favor. Councillor Smith? In favor. Councillor Stockwell? In favor. Mayor Smith? In favor. A vote of seven in favor and zero opposed. The motion is carried. Thank you. Item number 5C. Again, Beachfront Management Board meeting minutes from October 16th. Moved by Councillor Stockwell, seconded by Councillor Smith. The Committee of the Whole of Council received the October 16th, 2017 Beachfront Board Management meeting minutes from the Chief Administrative Officer as circulated. Questions or comments? Seeing none. The motion having been read, we'll call for the vote. Councillor Belanger? In favor. Deputy Mayor Bifolci? In favor. Councillor Gray? In favor. Councillor Ego? In favor. Councillor Smith? In favor. Councillor Stockwell? In favor. Mayor Smith? In favor. The vote is seven in favor and zero opposed. The motion is carried. Thank you. And 5D, uh, Beachfront Management Board of October 26th, moved by Councillor Stockwell, seconded by Councillor Smith. Resolve the Committee of the Whole count of Council received the October 26, 2017 Beachfront Management Board meeting minutes from the Chief Administrative Officer as circulated. Questions or comments on this one? Uh, Councillor Bray? Uh, from you, Mayor Smith, to the, I guess, the Chair of the Committee. Under the, uh, the Beachfront Coordinator Report, there's a discussion about barbecues at the Main Street Market. And it goes on to say that the town was advised the construction of a permanent barbecue facility that a vendor could use to prepare freshly barbecued items would be permitted but I had done some reading and I didn't think that it actually was I thought that a permanent barbecue had to be fixed to a premise so I wasn't sure if that was something that they no, would I continue it, it probably said could be okay yeah um, so they're not looking to build a permanent barbecue at the mainstream no market? no that's not the intent Okay, thank you. No. I just wa wasn't clear when I read the minutes. Right. Thank you. So to be clear, it, it's indicated could be? It says, yeah, it does it could yeah, be. Yeah, maybe if the so CAO could help us with that one, because he take the minutes. Mr. CAO? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, so just um, there was a meeting that took place, and it, the discussion revolved around the construction of a bar or the use of barbecues, and it was mentioned that if the town, if the town wanted to see um, barbecues down there, it would have to be a permanent facility. It couldn't be a temporary facility but that would be With up all to the, the safety precautions exactly. yeah. so there's no appetite at the beachfront management board at this no. time to build thank you not that we're aware of okay thank you. all right all right any other questions or comments seeing none madam deputy clerk With the motion having been read we'll call for the vote councillor belanger in favor deputy mayor by Fulci. in favor councillor gray in favor councillor ego in favor councillor smith in favor councillor stockwell in favor mayor smith in favor the vote is seven in favor and zero opposed the motion is carried <coughs> thank you Moving on to 5E, the Deputy Clerk and Cemetery Custodian Report. Uh, Lord, did you wish to speak to this at all? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, through you, so the, the current five-year uh, accessibility plan for the town is coming to the uh, end of life at the end of this year. So the town and staff are proposing the next five-year plan that will outline the strategies to prevent uh, and remove the barriers. Uh, to people with persons with disabilities and as well as meeting the regulations. So in consultation with staff, the public, the Accessibility Advisory Committee, 
and council we're looking for input um, from everybody prior to request for final approval of the plan so I'm not sure if anybody has any questions or comments Councillor Smith thank you uh, through you to the deputy clerk um, I was just wondering with this plan if um, it has to be renewed every five years does this include businesses or is it just town property it's in um, well, it's in regards to the, what the town is doing, and so town buildings, town functions. Uh, there is a section that touches on um, private businesses that would need to be in compliance with the rules as well. And we are going to offer, looking to offer a, a package to help facilitate those checklists for them to look, be looking at. But this would be in regards to the town's property okay. and initiatives. Yes, thank you. And be nice to get our businesses on board with this as well. Thanks. Other questions or comments, Councillor Bray? Thank you. Um, early this year, I had made a motion to record all advisory committee meetings and make them available on YouTube for all residents to view. So I believe it falls under the accessibility plan or it should moving forward. There was no appetite at this council table to approve um, the recording of committee meetings, the advisory committees. However, I do think moving forward it's important to make all meetings open, transparent, and accessible to all members of com our community. Some can make it to the audience today, but there's a lot that are at work or unable to, you know, to get here by vehicle or by bike or by walking or by, you know, climbing the stairs to actually sit in this classroom. So I would hope that somehow in this document that moving forward, maybe the next council will have an appetite to uh, to tackle that issue. Other questions or comments? Seeing none. Madam, uh, I'll read the uh, the motion moved by Councillor Smith, seconded by Deputy Mayor by Fulci, that committee of the whole committee. Sorry, the Committee of the Hall recommends to Council that it receive the Draft Town of Wasaga Beach Multi-Year Accessibility Plan for 2018 through 2022 for information, and further that Council provide feedback to staff if desired on the Draft Multi-Year Accessibility Plan for 2018 to 2022 prior to a request for final approval from <coughs> staff. Madam Deputy Clerk. Thank you, Your Worship. The motion having been read, we'll call for the vote. <coughs> Councillor Blanche. In favor. Deputy Mayor by Fulci. In favor. Councillor Bray. In favor. Councillor Ego. In favor. Councillor Smith. In favor. Councillor Stockwell. In favor. Mayor Smith. In favor. The vote is seven in favor and zero opposed. The motion is carried. Thank you. And moving on to item number 5F, uh, we have a motion moved by Councillor Smith, seconded by Councillor Stockwell. The Committee of the Whole received the report regarding the response <coughs> to various procedural questions for information purposes. Madam Clerk, do you wish to speak to this? Um, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, no, it's just really a summary of, uh, I was asked a couple of questions from the committee members, and I'm just providing information uh, based on those. So if there's any questions, of course, please come. Great. Questions or comments? Uh, Deputy Mayor by Fulci. Thank you. Um, and thank you to Andrea for putting the um, report together. I do have a comment with regard to um, an item on page two where it states that members of council who are not appointed members of an advisory committee can ask the chair for permission to attend a closed session. I think it's important to point out here that in some cases we have unelected residents acting as chair of these important committees. For a resident to not only have access to confidential town business, but to also have the authority to decide whether elected officials can attend or not is totally inappropriate in my opinion. Recently there was a Dear Editor letter in the paper authored by the chair of our downtown development uh, master plan steering committee who took a shot at me. And I have to question how appropriate it, it is that I as deputy mayor have to ask that individual for permission to sit at the table for town business. Residents need to understand that as your elected deputy mayor, I can't look out for your best interest in that type of an environment. So I would like to put forward a motion that would see our policy change to allow any member of council to sit in on an in-camera meeting with regard to any of our town committees, recognizing we are the elected officials and residents should not be privy to confidential information that we are not. And I hope to have a seconder for that. Prepare that motion, uh, Madam Clerk, or Madam Deputy Clerk. Seconder for that. Councillor Bray. So much for <laughs> Any other questions or comments with respect to this item? Councillor Bray. Yeah, just I would second that motion. I do believe that as elected, elected officials, we do have the um, that obligation to understand the business of the town, and when we're excluded from certain members of advisory committee. Uh, closed session it's hard when those things come back at us in other reports or in recommendations because we don't know the logic or the um, necessarily the steps that they made to make that decision so all right Councillor Stockwell Mr. Mayor I, I just would bring to the members attention that their advisory committees they advise councils 
Do we know anything? Councillor Belanger? Well, I, I would say the same thing. I don't believe that there is any decision being made yeah. within <coughs> any of those closed sessions that doesn't have to come to Council. Uh, my concern is, is that uh, I, I believe that some uh, committee meetings are attended very selectively. And uh, uh, the people that are on a committee and, uh, and attend all of the committee meetings are involved in discussions that happen over time that may result in a closed session. I think it's very important that that information and knowledge is, is available to those people in closed session. And again, whatever decision or recommendation that they make in that closed session uh, relating to the town would still uh, come to council for a, a final approval, is my understanding. Uh, Councillor Brain. Yeah, I'm just not sure that the decisions made in closed council do come to, um, or closed session do come to council because with regards to the beachfront management, they're talking about leases. They have the responsibility for the leases. We no longer know who pays, who doesn't pay, who, until it hits the year end um, numbers and we're short. We don't know if, if deals have been cut, they haven't been cut, they, we hear rumors out in the street, but we honestly do not know. Um, what's happening <coughs> and if we care to attend I think we should be allowed to attend we don't have to I know it's still optional I know that there is a committee but I would like the ability to be there mr. CEO uh, beachfront management board uh, they're reporting to council is quarterly semi-annually or annually do you recall quarterly. Quarterly. so anything discussed there would come back quarterly is that what should uh, Madam Clerk, I, I want you to uh, maybe speak to your report so we clear up uh, any misunderstandings that may be here with respect to uh, the legal advice you were given with respect to this uh, particular subject. Thank you, uh, Your Worship. So uh, we had uh, reached out to um, our solicitor in this case, it was Mr. Alston, to provide us with his opinion regarding the process of having a member of council not appointed to an advisory committee or local board attend the closed session of that meeting. And during his response, or included in his response, he had indicated um, that members of council who are not members of the board are not permitted as a right to sit in the closed meeting, uh, a part of the meetings of any advisory committee or board. Um, and then he did indicate the fact that, and as Councillor Bray had mentioned, that there is that opportunity in our procedural bylaw that they can request um, the chair to sit during that meet, that portion of the meeting, and then it would be up to the chair um, to determine whether that individual would be allowed to stay. Um, in the, included in that, which isn't, um, well, I can highlight one of the other items that I had referenced in here. Um, so it's saying, um, just read it. The response noted that to suggest that a member of council is entitled to sit in the closed part of a meeting of any board or committee of which or he or she is not a member is to instill members of council with a right not found in the Municipal Act or any other statute in which no court has recognized. This is based on his opinion. He further went on to say that in a number of cases those items would be coming forward to council and I think that's what you were perhaps speaking about when I was preparing the motion. Um, so that they would be in the loop uh, at, at that point as well. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, Deputy Mayor Mifolci. Thank you. Council creates these committees. We are the ones who appoint them. We are the ones who create the terms of reference. There is nothing stopping us from putting it in the terms of reference that any member of council can attend any close. We create the terms of reference. We have the ability to do that. As far as the discussion that happens in camera, yes, individual items might come to council down the road. But that discussion that happens, there's a lot of stuff that is, is helpful in making a decision that I would like the ability to sit in and listen on. It helps me make decisions down the road when something comes to the table. Uh, Councillor Stavo, no? Uh, Councillor Belanger? Well, uh, just, uh, you know, if we're going down that road, uh, I, had, uh, I had been sitting in on a number of board meetings and uh, initially I guess I didn't understand the difference between board and committee. When I was first appointed to council, I was told I could attend all these meetings and participate, but couldn't vote. At one point, I was told, no, that's not the case. You know, if you're attending a board meeting, you uh, can't participate. You can only uh, sit and listen. So, uh, and, uh, that, and that came up, uh, you know, in a meeting when it was brought to my attention from members of council. So uh, again, I'm concerned about how selectively we approach some of these items, so, and uh, maybe our uh, 
clerk could uh, let us know what is common practice within municipalities and uh, maybe it's something we might want to do a little more research on and uh, take a look at. I, I don't know, but if we're going to look at that policy, there's probably a couple others we should look at because I certainly believe I can contribute to uh, a lot of meetings. So. All right, thank you, Councilor Deputy Mayor Mike Fulci. Yeah, just to say, I don't know why any member of council would have an issue with another member of council sitting in on, on a committee meeting um, do, for town business. I'm not saying to <laughs> no, sit in. board meeting. Uh, or board sorry. meeting. I'm not saying sit in and be part of the discussion, but to sit in there to hear the conversation I think is really important. So with that, I would ask that the question be called, please. All right, so I, I'll just, I'll call, I will call the question, but I'll just clarify that it's, I don't think there's any issue here with members of council sitting in on meetings. I think the issue here is any meeting that something goes in camera uh, and that's what we'll deal with so it's moved by <coughs> deputy mayor by Fulci and seconded by councillor Bray here's all the committee of the whole recommends to council that the procedural bylaw be amended to reflect that members of council not appointed by advisory or two advisory committees including local boards can attend closed meeting sessions of those particular committees and further that the appropriate notice be provided regarding changes to the procedural bylaw. Questions or comments? Councillor Smith? Uh, yes, Your Worship. I have a, a question because um, I really believe it's up to the chair to invite council. What I wouldn't like to see is seven count members of council at a committee meeting. And I think that could. Order, I've asked for the question. To okay. Call. Well, he asked if there were any comments. All right. So that's my comment. Right. Mr. CEO? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just with respect to the motion, um, the library board uh, operates under the Public Libraries Act, so I'm not sure if council has authority with respect to this particular situation as it applies to the library board. I just throw that out as a caution because I'm not 100% certain, and uh, it may be that upon uh, further investigation that the library board under the Public Libraries Act may be able to have those meetings and not permit uh, members of council to sit, but I just raise it as a, as a potential issue. Great. Thank you, George. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, call the question, Madam Deputy Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Chair. For the motion to have red, we'll call for the vote. Councillor Belanger? Opposed. Deputy Mayor Bacolci? In favour. Councillor Bray? In favour. Councillor Ego? Opposed. Councillor Smith? Opposed. Councillor Stockwell? Opposed. Mayor Smith? Opposed. The vote is two in favour and five opposed. The motion is defeated. Mm -hmm. Now, Mr. Smith? Just further to uh, the uh, <coughs> report from the clerk um, it, uh, with regards to the note taking, and I think I raised that because there are members who sit around the table here who take extensive notes during uh, in camera meetings. And I was concerned about how those notes were being handled and where they would go from here and if they would accidentally fall on somebody's <coughs> desk or something like that. So uh, it was my concern. And I trust that council is abiding by the uh, the uh, the, uh, excuse me. It, the, the they're abiding by our rules for council, and that the closed meeting is important, and that these notes uh, are destroyed properly at, as soon as possible after the meeting. It's my understanding, just to clarify, Madam Clerk, that uh, members of council or committees are allowed to take notes. It's their responsibility to ensure that they're kept confidential and destroyed properly. Correct. All right. All right. Uh, I'll need the, uh, the motion moved by Councillor Smith, second by Councillor Stockwell. <coughs> that committee whole received the report regarding response to various procedural questions for information purposes. Madam Deputy Clerk. With the motion having been read, we'll call for the vote. Councillor Belanger. In favour. Deputy Mayor Bifolci. In favour. Councillor Bray. In favour. Councillor Eagle. In favour. Councillor Smith. In favour. Councillor Stockwell. In favour. Mayor Smith. In favour. The vote is seven in favour and zero opposed. The motion is carried. Thank you. Moving on to item 5G, the planner's report dated November 21st, 2017, with the Community Improvement Plan, downtown Wasaga Beach. Uh, Doug, do you wish to speak to this report? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Rhinos. Nathan as well. And Andrew. It's a party. Floor is yours, gentlemen. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Mr. Lukash is going to speak to the, the technical aspects uh, of the Community Improvement Plan that's before the committee today and uh, add to the report that is on the agenda. Uh, I just wanted to add that uh, in addition to the objections that were received and noted in Mr. Lukash's report, 
uh, the town today received uh, 10 additional objections via email and letter. Um, two of those objections came from uh, landowners or on behalf of landowners that have properties within the priority investment area. Uh, five of them have properties within the CFP area, but not within the priority investment area. And then another three objections came from um, citizens at large from Wasaga Beach. Um, <coughs> there is uh, decidedly a common thread in the objections and it, it appears to uh, be a concern uh, of expropriation. And I just wanted to point out that the Community Improvement Plan uh, is not in and of itself an expropriation by law. That authority lies within the Municipal Act and um, council and committee may recall that uh, legal counsel for the town um, spoke to, to committee, I think it was June 20th, when um, there was uh, an information section, session on the Expropriation Act. Uh, the CIP is, is uh, in, a, in essence a planning tool, and the authority comes from the Planning Act, and um, this, the range of powers of the CIP is, is set out in the Planning Act and also in our official plan, which Mr. Wukash's report goes into in, in some detail. So for you, a quick synopsis of, of the objections that we've received today. Thank you, Doug. Nathan? Yes, uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, just wanted to highlight some key uh, pieces uh, of, of uh, the CIP that the uh, Council should be aware of and also the residents of our community should be aware of uh, as we're uh, talking about uh, the Community Improvement Plan and the benefits to the town. Uh, so, uh, as we heard uh, also on June 20th, uh, CIPs are tools that are used province-wide uh, by municipalities. They're a common uh, tool that are used. Uh, they're, they're under the authority of provincial legislation. The purpose is really to provide a catalyst uh, to encourage development that would otherwise not be financially feasible for private investment. Uh, it's, uh, we call that the but-for test. Uh, the town can use a CIP to assist in uh, planning and financing <coughs> development activities uh, that effectively use and restore lands, buildings, and uh, infrastructure to achieve broader municipal goals. Uh, so, um, the, the our C this CIP that is before you today has been structured so that uh, council doesn't have to use the incentive programs if the private market can achieve uh, the goals of the plan. So that's a really critical piece uh, to consider. <coughs> uh, so the, in terms of the details of the CIP, it's really about uh, creating four potential incentives that could be used to uh, assist in making a project financially viable uh, within a very focused area of the downtown, and that's called our priority investment area. So that area is uh, fronts onto both of the two <coughs> public squares within the downtown and on Main Street. Uh, between uh, the community hub area <coughs> and the Nottawasaga <coughs> River, as well as uh, on Spruce Street in the beachfront area. So it's a very focused area that we're talking about here for the incentives. Uh, Council is not obligated to award incentives uh, through this CIP. Uh, the the, the uh, programs can be discontinued at any time, uh, at, which is identified in the CIP. But there is a five-year window that we've identified uh, for these incentives to, to be in place. Uh, right now, Council's not making any commitments at this time to providing incentives or any type of financial obligation. Uh, and each application would be reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis as they, as they uh, come in. Um, one uh, important thing to note too is that CIP incentives can also be used outside of the pr uh, priority incentive area uh, <coughs> throughout the downtown, provided that they create new affordable rental or market rental uh, housing opportunities, which is uh, a dire need in our community and uh, one that is uh, supported uh, supports our housing strategy. Uh, so that was an important piece of this uh, this picture as well. So it's really critical to note that the CIP is performance based. Uh, so <coughs> applicants uh, would have to meet uh, performance based criteria just to be able to apply for incentives. So there's a, there'd be a pre-consultation process where they have to meet some initial uh, eligibility criteria. Uh, and very briefly, those are conformity with our official plan, zoning bylaw, and urban design guidelines that we will set out. Uh, implement, it must implement the Downtown Development Master Plan. Uh, it must be located within the PIA, 
other than the affordability component. Uh, it should be a mixed-use building with a minimum <coughs> three-story height with commercial at grade. And most critically, the applicant must submit a proposed development pro forma that identifies the financial need for those incentives in order to make the project work. So that that piece has been weighted the most uh, in, our, in the evaluation criteria. Uh, so if they meet those initial eligibility criteria, then an applicant may apply uh, to the town and be reviewed by the evaluation team that has been identified in the CIP. And that's a staff, uh, generally a staff team with the, the, the chair of the downtown development um, steering committee. Uh, so very briefly, the once, once an application has been received, there would be more subjective uh, evaluation criteria based on the quality of the proposal. Those items would be based on architecture and urban design, uh, massing of a building, uh, the, the contribution to the public realm, uh, what type of commercial uses are being uh, proposed at the grade, uh, and also crit most critically the financial viability of those projects. Um, and also there'd be a bonus for affordability if there were uh, units that were being proposed within uh, uh, proposals within the priority investment area, they would get <coughs> a potential bonus uh, for affordable housing units being proposed uh, within those. Um, so in terms of what the incentives actually are, uh, there is four of them identified in the CIP. The first is a residential mixed use development incentive program. and and that would uh, rebate a portion or all of the residential or commercial development charges for a project. Uh, and the applicant would pay those up front and be rebated 50% uh, upon occupancy for half of the units and then 50% upon substantial completion of the project. So that's another critical piece is that the, the risk is minimized to the town because the, uh, the incentives, as you'll see, are only available upon the completion of a project. So that's a really important piece to note as well. And we also will know as the project progresses when those incentives might need to be rebated so that we can budget for them and identify that in uh, upcoming uh, budgets. Uh, the next uh, incentive is a tax increment equivalent grant and that looks uh, <coughs> at upon the completion of a project as well. Uh, the increase in tax revenue between the assessed value before construction and then after construction, that increase would be rebated over a five-year period. Uh, so that's another potential incentive that we have uh, at our disposal. Uh, another one would be process-related. So <coughs> application fees for planning, building, or engineering uh, could be rebated uh, either in part or in whole uh, upon different milestones of the project being completed as well. <coughs> And then the last incentive would be about uh, for parking. Uh, parking sometimes can take up a substantial component of the site, so we would be able to provide parking relief through a rezoning or through a minor variance um, in order to, uh, subject to the, what the, the building's needs are and identify uh, a relief for that uh, purpose. So uh, the, the cost uh, for uh, this right now is really, uh, really will depend on what proposals come in and what their pro formas identify. Uh, so we won't really know the full impact until we have uh, applications before us. Uh, and those, those incentives, as I mentioned, must be demonstrated to be needed by a, an applicant before the town can even consider that we would uh, provide an incentive of that nature. Again, the town doesn't have to use uh, the proposed tools um, if it's not uh, needed. Um, we can establish a maximum amount per year if we if we so choose. Uh, and there's a five-year sunset clause which encourages development quickly. That's our goal for the downtown. Um, and uh, if council decides to enter into an agreement with a potential uh, applicant, uh, the town will know in advance what financial impacts will be because we will know when generally the building will be uh, completed and know when those rebates will, uh, would apply. Uh, so the town treasurer is gathering information on uh, and investigating um, how those types of uh, rebates will be financed over time uh, and will assist uh, us in, in identifying how the CIP will be rolled out. 
So those are kind of the critical pieces that uh, council um, should be aware of and also our, our general public. And with that, I'll uh, turn it over to you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, uh, Nathan. Anything else to add, Doug or Andrew? No? Uh, quick question. The uh, report that came through from Municipal Affairs and Housing uh, and their recommendations, I'm sure you gentlemen have considered that and will build those recommendations into the SISMI <coughs> Uh, Your Worship, those uh, <coughs> we have already addressed those uh, comments into the uh, CIP that you have before you. All right, so that's what we dealt with. Thank you, Andrew. Actually, sorry, I would like to add one one other point. Uh, legal counsel has reviewed the draft CIP in, in detail. Okay, great. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Fulgi. Thank you, um, <coughs> Nathan. Are you saying that all of the recommendations from MMA, MMH was included in this? Maybe I missed some because I saw some that were not changed in the document. And through you, Your Worship. Uh, no, not all of the recommendations were. Uh, their role in this process is of an advisory nature, so they provided us uh, some suggestions, and we reviewed those with our legal team as well as uh, and Mary Lyons consultants who, who prepared the original draft and kind of decided what uh, would best work for, for our purposes. Okay, thank you. And MMAH is. Um that's their role. They're, they're quite familiar with these things. Um, I'm concerned that those recommendations weren't included. Um, there's some important ones that I feel should have been. Um, but I'm more concerned about the power that the CIP will give um, council and the town in this situation. The plan will give council um, greater ability to expropriate land and make deals with the developer for that land that, in my opinion, will not benefit or financially profit the residents or community as a whole, but rather just a handful of people. We're calling it, we're saying it's a planning tool, but at the end of the day, by putting the CIP in place, it makes it easier for the municipality to expropriate. Is that accurate? Andrew? Um, through you, Your Worship. I think Mr. Heron was, was very clear. You are not considering an expropriation bylaw this evening. Those powers already are in place with this municipality. The pro expropriation proceedings of 140 Main began without a CIP in place. The municipality already has that <coughs> ability. This is a planning tool document first and foremost. It is not an expropriation bylaw. Doug? I, I, I think um, the, um, if, if we, <coughs> we th the question that's being posed um, is a little bit reflected in the objections that we received today. And um, there is a concern that the free markets should rule. In, in this situation over uh, chances of expropriation. I, I think uh, a more wholesome answer is that um, staff have been directed by council that intensification is the direction to go, particularly in the Main Street node. And when it comes to intensification, which falls in line with the Provincial Growth Plan, uh, the documents that we pull together um, uh, tend to work together as well. So, whereas the ultimate authority for expropriation is granted to the municipality through the Municipal Act, um, the CIP that's before us is granted, that, that power comes from the Planning Act, but um, it does speak to expropriation, but the rationale behind that is that all the documents tend to work together in moving the municipality forward in intensification, and there's a strategy there in making sure that all the documents work together. So the, uh, the ultimate authority is for expropriation is not within the CIP, it is within uh, the, the powers under the Municipal Act. And we've seen that the town has already acted on those powers in the absence of the CIP. Deputy Mayor? Yeah, and I'm not going to argue with staff on this, but the reality is by having this plan in place, I believe it makes it much easier for the municipality to go in, expropriate, choose to sell it less at a lesser um, amount to a developer, maybe even for free. So that is my understanding of it. That's what I believe that this will do, so I won't be supporting it. Thank you. Except I think it's important to be clear that uh, under the Expropriation Act, there are checks and balances in place to ensure that if expropriation does take place, that fair market value is paid for the property being expropriated. Is that not, is that an accurate statement, staff? You're seeing all three nod. Uh, and you've gone through this process uh, uh, with uh, with our legal counsel, who is well versed in, in CIPs and expropriation, I'm sure, and also uh, with Ann Barry Lyons, who is well versed in this type of this subject. Correct. That's correct. All right. Thank you, uh, Councillor Banger. Um, yeah, uh, a few things. One one point of clarification. Just are are, are these the uh, 
the information we received today? The, the this package? Time. Yes. Yes. It okay, is. because I, I'm noticing many of the names on what was received today are also on our agenda, and we've had the agenda before today, so quite a number of these are duplications to letters already received. But uh, it's my understanding that any community, as it evolves and grows and finds needs uh, to improve uh, both inappropriate housing and economically, that uh, CIPs are very common. This is not an unusual thing for a community to undertake. But uh, when we use the word incentives, I find it a little misleading because I, I, I'd like to explore that it's, it's also an investment. So, for instance, today uh, we could look at uh, on Main Street where we have a open area. It's a field. There's nothing <coughs> there. Uh, I think we could probably go and look and see that the property tax that that's generating for our community is, you know, let's call it 16000 a year for, uh, for a guesstimate. Yet we may incentivize to have that become one or two levels of commercial and possibly 30 units of condo apartments that after the incentive is paid to make that happen, the property tax that that building will generate could be in the neighborhood of $160,000 or $200,000 a year. So I think it's important for our residents to know these incentives that are, they're not paid out as an expense. They're paid out to generate a return to our community. And I believe uh, at one of our budget meetings, our CAO made it very apparent to us that unlike a new subdivision out on 45th where no uh, services exist today, uh, where all those initial costs for street lights and water and sewer and pumping stations and all of those things are an, an extra cost, those infrastructures already exist on our main street. So it even gives us a more significant return on our investment. Not to mention the tourism draw and the enhanced amenities for our residents, like a new cultural center, uh, community hub that might include a new larger library, uh, a new youth center. We're going through that survey. Uh, this has a tremendous, tremendous, a lot of benefit. This is, this is, these incentives are not in place to say, hey, let's, let's just make it real rosy for a developer. That, that is not what this is about. This is about to make our community much better than what it is today. Andrew? Yeah, and through you, Your Worship, you're, you're absolutely right, Council Belanger. Um, Nathan mentioned the but for test. Um, and what's critical to understand behind this, but for doing this, development would not occur. So a vacant land, it could be a parcel of vacant land or a site that the municipality is interested in seeing redeveloped. The reason we want to see a development pro forma with an application is that so we can very clearly understand what's the financial issue that is preventing this development from happening. Once we can understand that clearly, then we can recommend to council what an appropriate tool might be to overcome that obstacle. And but for doing that, that development would, would not occur. And the other important thing to understand is when you have redevelopment, it builds your assessment base. There's a payback on it, this investment. And we've actually had discussions with the treasurer about <coughs> how we can, if any incentives are granted, how those can be repaid over time. So that's important to understand. And those incentives, those in, sorry, those incentives, but those uh, repayment, those tax dollars, so on and so forth, are for perpetuity as well. Right? So they never <coughs> yeah. uh, Councillor Smith. Thank you. I just had uh, uh, one was uh, when I was reading that package of letters we just received. Uh, there's nothing keeping the owners on Main Street from selling to Fram without having to go through the municipality. And I also wanted to speak to the fear mongering that's going on about expropriation because um, I think people need to get that out of their head and look at what it's going to do for the community as far as raising taxes, bringing in money and providing a downtown that we've all been wanting. Now the CIP program, we talked about that when we first bought the beachfront properties because we needed a plan 
to get businesses down there. And it's been talked about since I've been on this council. And I think that I'm happy to see it. It's moving us forward. And I'm, I'm really, uh, I've read through it very carefully and I really think that this is where we need to go in our next step. Thank you. I just want to clarify something, Councillor, if you don't mind. Uh, you mentioned raising taxes. Yes. So I want to be clear that this is not an incentive and this is not a plan to raise taxes. It will raise more tax revenue because there will be more residents, there will be more intensity, right. but that will not raise taxes uh, on an individual basis. If anything, the goal is to hopefully be able to reduce taxes because of this intensification. Uh, Councillor Bray? Uh, thank you. Um, I have a number of concerns with it. One would be the parking rate exemption. Two would be the ability to sell municipal property below fair market value. Um, I've read through other municipality CIPs. I was at a conference where they actually spoke about one in the town of Newmarket where they didn't um, give away the fees, they deferred them. <coughs> so a developer comes in, they don't have any money when they're building, but by the time people are starting to move into that building, they're making good money. Yes, they put affordable housing in that, so again, it was a win-win, they had guaranteed tenants, but they deferred the development fees until the, the bulk of their expenses were over, and I don't know that that's a consideration in here, but I would like to see deferral as much as um, rebating or incenting or giving them away. Uh, the other comment that I have, just in, in reference to, to Councillor Belanger's comment, was two and a half years ago we had a developer sitting at the table and they own um, a piece of property on Main Street that's an empty field and they came to us with designs for a three or four story condo. And there might have been a parking uh, exemption, there was a couple of things they were talking about. But the majority of this council said, well we'd really like to see retail on the bottom of that condo. And those people went away and we haven't heard from them since because they wanted to build a condo, sell a condo, <coughs> move on to their next project. They didn't want to become retail tenants or managers of retail tenants. So we might want something, but we need to know that the market is ready to, to provide that. I don't think um, to say that the CIP will then bring everybody to the table and they'll do what we want them to do. We've had people at this table that we're kind of discouraging from, from moving on with their development because we, it doesn't maybe fit the vision that some people might have, but I think we need to be open to all developers because at the end of the day, it's their money and it's their risk. It shouldn't be taxpayers. So again, I just want to clarify uh, the particular property we're talking about. Uh, we did have uh, the landowner approach us with a plan for a condominium. Um, at no time, I don't think they indicated they would build that condominium. They were looking for approval for a condominium, which developers or uh, speculators often do. They, they come in, they get all their approvals, they get everything in place, and then they sell that plan because that's where the money they make is. So that I'm not saying that's the case here, but it happens, it happens all the time, and I don't recall ever hearing from this particular developer that they were moving forward or wanting to move forward. They simply wanted approval for the plan. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. In fact, uh, subsequent to the delegation that developer made to the, the committee at that time, um, they did come back eventually with a revised drawing that showed um, a, a portion of the ground floor with commercial in it, but they never did move forward with a formal planning application, a planning and development application. Uh, the rationale uh, that they presented to us uh, did not, for not moving forward, did not incorporate any discussion on, on the ground floor commercial. It was for different reasons that they chose not to go ahead. Councillor Valangi? Uh, just a couple of quick things. Uh, certainly there's uh, uh, whether or not we have commercial on the ground floor or, or whether we have condominiums, I think the, the return on uh, on what a CIP could do is, is still uh, substantial. <coughs> With that said, uh, we have chosen uh, a partner if that is finalized that is a mixed-use uh, specialist. Uh, I, I believe you know, certainly one of the uh, most uh, renowned in Ontario. So that uh, should be in our favor. Uh, so, you know, uh, ag again, this could evolve, and I think the most important thing is with all these uh, CIP incentives, each, each time one is utilized, it comes before council. Is that not correct? That's correct. Um, I'm going to call Andrew next and then the Deputy Mayor, but uh, I, I do want to. Uh, to speak uh, clearly here with respect to the partner. The partner of Fran Sloker providing everything comes together, and I'm confident it will, uh, <coughs> is the partner in the town-owned lands. So lands that the town owns. 
<coughs> so any privately owned land out there, a landowner could develop on their own. They could leave it as it is. They could team up with another developer, uh, Fram or someone else. There's nothing tying anyone's hands here. It has to be, I want it to be clear that Fram will be the developer partner for town owned lands. Uh, Andrew? Yeah, I, I just through you, Your Worship, I wanted to respond to Councillor Bray's uh, comment about the just further to to Doug Heron's comments. Um, the individual individual in, in question, um, they're well known throughout the province. That's their business. They're land speculators, and they go in, they rezone lands, and then they sell to builders. Um, they don't build developments. That's not in their business. Um, and they they confirm that in discussions with them that they have no intention of building on those lands. Uh, they are looking to sell <coughs> those lands to a builder who would come in and build. So I just wanted council to be aware of that. Um, that's why the project is not moving forward because they have no intention of, of building there. At least that's what we, has been conveyed to us. Um, all of this also, just building on Councilor Belanger's comments, reinforces why it's so important to have a plan. Um, that's why we have a plan. You want your rules to be clear up front so that when developers come to town um, and they're looking at a piece of land, they know what the expectations are, they know that retail is required on certain pieces of land, they can build that into their <coughs> pro forma. If there's any issues achieving that, they can come and share those with us and we can evaluate that and make recommendations to Council. This is just giving Council the ability to um, get involved if council chooses, if there are market issues preventing us moving forward with our vision. It's not committing to doing anything, it's just giving a, an additional toolbox to the municipality. I also want to be clear because uh, Councillor bring, brings up a good point and I agree with her that we want to defer as opposed to give away as much as possible. So I want to be clear, whether it be taxes, whether it be development charges, uh, the CIP is clear or will be clear that we can either give that or we can defer that. Is that correct? Or is that only specific to uh, <coughs> development charges or taxes? Uh, through you, Your Worship, the way the CIP is worded, uh, it, it is a rebate, uh, but it, that rebate is only applicable if there's a need. So if there's no need shown by the developer for any incentive, um, then there's no need for the town to be involved. <coughs> um, so, so it's not, it, um, from a deferral standpoint, the, the tax increment grant is, is kind of structured in that way where uh, we're um, rebating some of the uh, taxes that they would pay once the project is complete for a five-year period, and then at, after that five-year period, they'd be paying the full uh, full tax rate. Uh, so <coughs> in, way, in some ways, it's uh, a deferral, but um, other than that, the, <coughs> the, grant, the, the grants are in a form of a rebate. So can we add that uh, as an option <coughs> that they could be deferred? Is it too late to do that as another tool in the tool chest? My, my recommendation to you, Your Worship, the, this outlines a, a set of tools that you can use, and it's, it can really be at the discretion of the of council as to how you, you slice and dice it when it when uh, when it comes to the table. Uh, so I think there's some flexibility built into the process, um, but it's really the pro forma that will help demonstrate what is it that they actually really need, and without that, um, you'd just be guessing. So I think there's flexibility. To or rebate um, and, and <coughs> address that at the time when someone's at the table with the pro forma. All right, thank you. Uh, sorry, was it you next? Sorry, but did I see another hand here? I was. Yes. Okay, so okay. Councillor, sorry, Deputy Mayor Bayfolds and Councillor Smith. Thank you, um, Councillor Blanche. brought up um, Fram, so I'm going to ask the question: Where are we at with the audit, and when can we expect the agreement to be <coughs> here? Yeah, through you, Your Worship, I was actually on the phone this afternoon with the auditor. Um, they've wrapped up their meetings with Fram. Uh, I was planning on putting it on the agenda. I haven't actually sent a note to Fram to advise them of this, but we're working towards uh, one of the first meetings in December. It's either at a, I'm going to target either uh, general government or committee of the whole, uh, depending on when I actually receive the auditor's report. But the work has been completed, and it's uh, he's in the process of, of writing the final recommendation. He being the auditor. Correct. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Oh, that's fine. I'm, I'm okay. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? 
All right, I'll read the uh, the question. <coughs> Moved by Councillor Smith, seconded by Councillor Belanger. And that committee of the whole recommends that council pass a bylaw to adopt a community improvement plan CIP for downtown Wasaga Beach. And that committee of the whole recommends that council adopt the community improvement plan CIP for downtown Wasaga Beach. And that council directs staff to prepare the supporting administrative application forms and a communication strategy to launch the downtown community improvement plan in 2018 upon the completion of the downtown Wasaga Beach policy framework official plan amendment zoning bylaw amendment and urban design and architectural design guidelines madam deputy clerk thank you worship with the motion having been read we'll call for the vote councillor belanger in favor deputy mayor by Fulci. opposed councillor gray opposed councillor ego in favor councillor smith in favor councillor stockwell in favor mayor smith in favor the vote is five in favor and two opposed the motion is carried thank you Moving on to item number 5H, the Recreation Coordinator's Report. Uh, did I see? There he is. Chris, join us. And Josh. Andrew, are you coming too? Not at this time. <laughs> Not at this time. All right. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. And lady. Floor is yours. Well, uh, I'd like to thank everyone uh, for hearing this item. It is uh, an addition to our budget discussions for 2018, and it uh, strictly comes uh, to us today because of the timing of this grant opportunity. So uh, I'll, I'll turn the uh, uh, simple discussion over to uh, Josh to identify uh, um, what it is that we're proposing, <coughs> and, and ideally uh, we can start to move it into the budget. Absolutely. So there's uh, there's been uh, quite a bit of meetings going on over the last uh, two or three weeks regarding this project and uh, I think we've come to a really uh, inclusive uh, program that, that we can present to the province to enhance seniors recreation in Wasaga Beach. Um, there's, a, there's a really um, nice piece with the, uh, the 55 plus seniors uh, recreation pass to include all our, our service providers in the area whether they're private <coughs> or, uh, or volunteer based recreation service providers so we're, we're looking at opening up all these opportunities to our, our seniors in the area and, uh, and allowing them to not only build their leisure repertoire but also, uh, also experience new recreation opportunities um, additionally, in, in part of this program, uh, we're looking at utilizing the, uh, the youth center for some programs during the day, um, and then continuing the role of the volunteer activities programmer position and allowing the, uh, that individual to take on some of the responsibility of the uh, 55 plus programs that we're, we're looking at. Great, thank you, gentlemen. Questions or comments? Councillor Smith. Thank you, thank you Richard. Uh, just to compliment Josh, because the Age Friendly Committee was going to apply for the same grant uh, for programming and other issues, the chair of the uh, Age Friendly Committee and Josh, I believe, sat down and went through everything. Um, and uh, we're, yeah, that committee is very happy. We did a poll of <coughs> the committee, and they're very happy with the direction that's been proposed. Great, thank you. Councillor Belanger. Yes, uh, just a <coughs> point of clarification, I think. Uh, on the, obviously, a part of the <coughs> criteria of the grant was that the municipality had to participate. Uh, but I believe in the discussions we have that some of that participation would be actually uh, rent collected so that we could, we could charge uh, rent that we wouldn't have otherwise uh, received, but that would be acceptable as part of the twenty-five thousand dollars requested of the of the municipality. Yeah, absolutely. So we are looking at receiving. I, I believe it's in the neighborhood of twenty thousand dollars, or yeah, twenty thousand nine hundred dollars um, in facility rental fees that would be um, that would be dedicated towards municipal facilities. Uh, the, the youth center is a big portion mm -hmm. of that. Um, and then there's also some other um, subsidization fees that would go into the recreation programs that exist already. So there is some, there is some money coming back into um, our, our existing programs <coughs> through this grant. Thank you. The way it's proposed. Any other questions or comments? It's uh, an absolutely great idea, Josh and uh, Chris and your staff. So great job as always. 
I have a motion moved by Councillor Smith, second by Deputy Mayor by Fulci, that the of the whole recommends to Council that they receive the report pertaining to the Seniors Community Grant Program. And further, the Council approves staff submitting an application for $100,000 to cover the Wasaga Beach 55 plus Seniors Recreation Program enhancements. And further, that Council recommend to Committee of the Whole as Budget Committee that it allocate an amount of $25,000 to cover the town's contribution to the program. Councillor Bray? Quick question. So, based on Councillor Belongi's comment about rent in kind, is our contribution $25,000 cash or is our contribution $20,000 in kind building <coughs> facilities? So, is it going to cost us $25,000 or? <laughs> is that a technical term to do? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Josh? <laughs> um, I, I think uh, it sort of balances out either way you, you end up looking at it, um, whether there's the $25,000 put up front in a budget or whether the 20, 20 grand is, is collected for uh, facility usage in the end. Um, there, is a, there, is a, there is a point that this does actually uh, make our budget um, look quite good at the end of the year. I don't know how else to, to put that, but that's... Uh, I would say to be specific. Total cost of the program is 125000 Yes, that's yeah. correct. Thank you. I got it. <laughs> this is a cash positive program yes. for the town of Saga Beach <laughs> after the uh, in outs app. Yeah. Yeah. We, we provide a service with our a youth center half yeah. of the day, yeah. and we can uh, collect rents for other programs in the other half of the day that end up supplementing the, the cost that we pay out to support the so If we get a programs. subsidy, we would go ahead, or if we get the grant, we would. Thank you. Correct. Yeah. All right. Did you have something to add, Councillor? Well, I, I just wanted to clarify is that uh, we would be generating rent for a, a time of day that currently that facility has not been rented. So it is a new revenue stream. So in in reality, uh, this is going to cost us a lot less than $25,000. All right, you've heard the question. Madam Deputy Clerk. <coughs> Your Worship, the motion having been read, we'll call for the vote. Councillor Belanger? In favor. Deputy Mayor Bifolci? In favor. Councillor Bray? In favor. Councillor Ego? In favor. Councillor Smith? In favor. Councillor Stockwell? In favor. Mayor Smith? In favor. Vote seven in favor and zero opposed. The motion is carried. Thank you. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Moving on to item 5i, the Director of Finance and Treasurer's Report. Madam Treasurer, and did yes. I see Cindy with you? Yes. All yes. right. Um, as well at that time the fleet 
was still under re review. We hadn't included all of the changes for the fleet. They've now been included in this uh, roll-up. And some of these increases that we have put in, they've been offset by an increase in the tax assessment base and some removal of items that were in the <coughs> first roll-up that we've now removed. So um, those are, are all netted out in roll-up number two. So when we look at the change now for where we are for the 2018 budget versus 2017, the total levy is 21 million. And this will have a, an impact on the tax rate change at 2.16%. And if you recall, for roll-up number one, we were at 3.06, so we now have a change. We're just a little under 1% less than we were when we did the first roll-up. Having a look at the operating expenditures and the changes from 2017 to 2018, um, this chart represents that there's been $873,000 increase in the 2018 expenditures. However, when you look at the different columns, there are numerous items that are netting against each other. So uh, the wages and benefits are approximately $608,000. They're about 70% of the change. But then we have significant reductions that occurred from uh, 2017 for single items. Uh, so, for example, we've had debentures that had been completed, so that would be a reduction from 2017. Uh, we had some items in the budget for 2017 for the Economic Development Downtown Plan, so some of that expenditure has been reduced. And those have been offset against some of the increases for 2018. So, overall, the net change is $873,000 for 2018's expenditures. The capital expenditures of 18 million, we've summarized them in the staff report. And of the total 18 <coughs> million in expenditures, 1.7 million will impact taxation. And of that 1.7 million, 294,000 is related to the fleet um, taxation impact. And that's using the current policy of 50 50, <coughs> where we take 50% from taxation in the year of purchase and 50% from reserves. So if we look at the top five categories for capital expenditures, um, they total 83% of the budget there, and you can see roads and bridges, water and sewer, storm drainage, the community health project, and the vehicles and equipment. Together, those items make up 83% of the capital budget. And the details for the capital budget were included in the staff report, as well as the additional attachments to the staff report. Here you can see the individual items that were being budgeted for. So when we looked at the reserves for 2018, there are items that are budgeted to go to the reserve and some, some items that are budgeted to be drawn on the reserves. So one of the major items is the OMPF grant that we get. We usually um, put a significant portion of that grant into the capital replacement reserve. So for 2018, 73% 70, of that grant is scheduled to go into the reserve. We also have the 1% capital replacement to, to, um, replant, to build for the capital asset management plan. And we have some, um, from the operating side, some surplus that will go to the beachfront, towards the beachfront repayment of 95,000. In, ge in general, there are some general reserves that we have in place, such as for computers, for the IT budget, <coughs> and other items that, like that, that go into the general reserve of 113000 And then the water and sewer rates also provide uh, surpluses that go into the reserves to support those programs. So in total, we have $4.2 million of allocations to the reserves for 2018. And then we utilize some of the reserves as well for a total of 4.3 million. And the ma major portions of that come from the water and sewer program again. We need to draw some reserves into that program and the public works projects that we have. And as well, we've used the tax rate stabilization <coughs> reserve for about $640,000. 
and um, 535,000 towards debenture for the beachfront property purchase. So that gives you a general idea of the impact to the reserves based on the 2018 budget at this rollout. So I'm going to cover now about the um, <coughs> Ontario Municipal Partnership Fund Grant. We uh, received in 2017 $2.9 million and we received information yesterday that we will now be uh, uh, obtaining $2.5 million in 2018, a difference of $441,000. And this is because um, the town of Wasaga Beach has reached a point in their population and their growth where we no longer qualify for the um, rural funding. So we're more of an urban center now, and the province's formula is driven towards urban centers being able to um, fund through their own tax base. So 2018, we'll see the reduction of <coughs> 441000 and we've already used of the grant in the budget 791000 So we need to make a decision on how are we going to <coughs> cover this remaining 441000 that has just been <coughs> learned about yesterday. So this chart shows you the decline of the, of the grant year after year. It's going to decline 15% of the previous year's balance. So for 2018, that 15% reduction is 441000 And if you were to put that into the tax rate, that would have about a 2% impact to the tax rate change. And then all the way down through to 2030, you can see the grant is almost starts to be only about fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 by the year 2030. So each year we're going to need <coughs> to address um, this reduction in the OMPF funding. And one of the main purposes of this funding is to help build the capital replacement reserve for the asset management plan. So we're going to need to look at the asset management plan and revisit that as to how would we um, move forward on supporting the plan. Councilor Blanchet. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, just a clarification. Um, you had uh, said we had gone from uh, rural uh, to urban funding, but I'm assuming uh, that this downloading to municipalities is this is consistent with every urban center. Uh, so this is uh, this reduction in the imp fund. Through your worship, yes, this is their formula. The, ba the base of okay. their formula, and they look at each municipality and their changes, and each municipality <coughs> could experience the same type of reduction. Right. Okay. So just uh, so basically, the uh, I'm assuming this is a provincial uh, fund. <coughs> so basically, every municipality is going to be faced with the same shortfalls to come up with in another way, yeah. year after year going forward. Your worship, as long as they are in the same position as this town is in the growth and the urbanization. Right. Yes. <coughs> Thank you. Carry on, uh, Johnson, please. So, some of the options we are presenting for consideration <coughs> um, the first one is we could contribute less to the reserves in 2018, so uh, we could reduce our contribution by 441000 and that would then, if we did that, maintain the 2.16. Um, tax rate increase that we're looking at presently. The second option is to reduce the operating or capital costs by 441000 And a third option would be we could take the 441000 and put it into the tax base at this time and increase the tax rate change by 2%. Um, and one of the things, if we choose option one, one of the things we need to make sure we do is we start to build in a plan for how to replenish this if eventually. Um, it's not sustainable to continue to use the grant funding for operational needs, so we need to address that at some point in time. All right. And so these options have pres been presented for discussion. And so at this point, um, before I move into whether or not you would like to talk about any of the staff reports, is there any questions on the information that's been presented so far? Council, questions? 
Okay. So uh, again, going back to the October 24th meeting, we had a request for information to be brought back to, to committee. And these were the staff reports that were uh, attached with the agenda. And I'm just wondering if there's any particular one that um, council would like to discuss. Deputy Mayor Beth Fulton. Thank you. I'm not really discuss um, more of a comment than anything. I appreciate the um, consolidation of the downtown master plan amounts. Um, however, I think a lot of them are out of line. In particular, the, um, the land acquisition. I have concern with that figure being used. I know one um, property along there is on the market for 3.4, another for one, another one I'm hearing is over 10. So to just put this amount in there for how much we're looking to put in this hub and in this area, that um, I'm not sure about that amount. So it's just a comment. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Councilor Stockwell? No, Mr. M Mr. Mayor, once we get to the beach fund management report, which is later on the agenda, my intention to ask to refer that back to the board for additional review to try and uh, cut some uh, dollars out of it. All right, thank you. Councilor Smith. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I had a concern about the cost of the fleet management. To me, that was a big number that uh, kind of shook me, and I, I just wondered if we really need to replace or <coughs> that amount in the budget for this year, or if it's something to be some this year, some next year, but I just thought it was a big amount. So I, I know Giuliano has it in his report, but um, that was... So do you want to hear from uh, our fleet manager with respect to that, Councillor? Yes, if you don't mind. So Giuliano? That's later. I think he has got a report later coming Okay, we'll do. All right, good enough. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Eagle, did I see your hand? No. Sure. Someone over here? No? Yeah. Like Councillor Bellagio? Well, well, I just... Uh, <coughs> Referring back to, uh, you know, a AMO has been uh, working on the shortfalls of municipalities for quite some time. There's some serious concern. And this is the first time I've, uh, or at least that I recall, the reduction of the OMP fund down to 2030. But I think uh, when you look at the bulk of, uh, of our operating costs, the increase being uh, payroll and benefits, which is <coughs> you know traditionally in the two percent range, that unless we take action to generate new revenue, uh, I, I, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to say that this is this is going to be a very cha challenging situation. That we we have to generate new revenue, or we're going to. Uh, be faced with uh, increased taxation, uh, and that, and that's by design of uh, other levels of government. In this case, there's no doubt, Councillor, that other levels of government dictate what we can and can't do every day. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? All right, Madam Treasurer. Uh, so we just have a few matters remaining to uh, be considered, and. Uh, as was mentioned, the Beachfront Management Board, some of the recommendations um, that uh, on the agenda. If those recommendations are deferred, then we'll <coughs> put them into the next roll-up. Uh, we still have to review the student wages and ca casual labor, labor survey for any impact it might have, and then minimum wage increase uh, for 2018, and lastly, what decision is made with regards to the OMP funding. So our next steps then are we're seeking <coughs> direction today as to how to handle the OMPF um, reduced funding. And then on December 5th, we would have what would be presumably our last roll up. And at that time, we'll present the four year operating and 10 year capital plan, um, beachfront management board recommendations, the remaining proposed changes for 2018 rates and fees and final 2018 budget review, and then a public meeting to follow on December the 12th. And that's it for this presentation. Councillor Belanger? Uh, I, I don't know uh, what's possible, but uh, for our next meeting, if it would be possible to see what we've received in home fund over the last 10 years or 12 years and what was put into reserve each of those years, and uh, if we even could look at a couple of neighboring uh, urban centers like Collingwood or, uh, you know, uh, I don't know what the next way, maybe 
uh, really is maybe not the best example. Midland, but maybe. But just, yeah, Midland, just to have an, uh, an understanding of uh, how how we've done and versus other municipalities, so it would be helpful. George? Thank you, Mr. Chair. So with respect to some of these other urban municipalities, and I haven't looked, um, I haven't looked in a while, but a number of those municipalities did not receive um, funding uh, in the past. So um, they they received no grant under this particular program due to the composition of their municipality. If the, uh, the province applies a formula to the particular municipality, and if they're not eligible for funding, they don't receive funding. The town of Wasaga Beach has benefited greatly due to the composition of this municipality, and we. Um, we have received approximately that amount over several years since the introduction of the, of the fund. Uh, we always knew at some point the government would decide that the town would start to re receive less less funding. So it was just a matter of when that would happen. It, uh, the town continues to grow. The town uh, reached a, a threshold uh, now that we're going to start to see that decline. The town uh, several years ago started to prepare itself to, uh, for that by uh, not including um, the grant funding in its operating budget. Basically over a five year period decided that it would increase its taxes to cover 20% uh, of the UMP fund over a five year period so that at the end of five years 100% of the whatever was granted would go into the uh, reserves for capital replacement. And uh, last year, uh, council decided that it would not uh, uh, conclude that fifth year and took the 20% and included it in the operating budget. So 80% of the past UMP grant was going into reserves for the capital replacement reserve and 20% was being used in, in operations. But the information we've just received, just received earlier today, um, we're now in a situation where uh, that, that decline is very apparent in terms of what that's what's that going to be. So uh, we have two issues. We have the impact on the operating budget with respect to um, the grant dollars affecting the operating budget, and also the contribution to our, our capital reserve, uh, capital replacement reserve. And those are issues that will have to be addressed at some point. Um, we we have talked about it. We have <coughs> talked about it as a as a council in terms of options to deal with it, but now, because of the announcement today, it's become front, front and center. So, um, I don't know how that information from other municipalities well, might be helpful because they've never, they've never received it, so they, or they've received a very small amount. Our challenge is now we're faced with a declining uh, amount that uh, has been outlined by the treasurer that's going to impact the municipality, and, you know, with that revenue, has been indicated for 2018. That's that's two percent. That is equivalent to a two percent tax rate increase. So this year we have some flexibility in the sense that we can uh, reduce the amount of contribution to the reserves to help offset that, which uh, which is helpful. But I think it uh, the treasurer has pointed out that uh, we have a longer term issue with respect to that because if we start to uh, decrease the amount to our capital reserves, we have used that capital reserve to help pay for capital projects. And if that reserve <coughs> is not in a good balance over time, now over time, because we're in a healthy reserve situation now, but over time, then um, we'll start to face issues in terms of where do, we <coughs> where do we source that revenue for a particular capital project in that given year, where that project is funded 50% from taxation and 50% from reserves. If we don't have the amount of Reserves, then, then we'll have to look at some options. And there are options you can borrow. You know, and debt financing is is an option. And, and the town has uh, used that vehicle to fund capital projects. So there are options for council. But it it paints a picture going into the future in terms of some of the challenges uh, Wasaga Beach is going to face from a financial standpoint. And I think that's the point that the treasurer is making. Councillor, oh sorry, no. I'm going to, Deputy Mayor, have that question first. 
Thank you. Um, <coughs> I guess more of a comment than anything. It, and I think the CEO has already addressed it um, with the other <coughs> municipalities. I don't think staff should be spending time on that. I think other municipalities have different financial challenges as well, so there, there's no comparing them. Um, as far as the options um, and, and the oomph grant, I'm concerned, you know, we're at 2.16 percent, but we don't have everything before us yet. We're still waiting on beach rent management and those things, so if I had to pick one today, it would be option one. No, I think beach rent management is included in that 2.16 as it stands, correct? Yes, Your Worship, um, for what was known for roll-up two of the beach management, which is a, a, a major portion of it, it is included. Um, so but it's I'm going back later on, it sounds like, so there could be changes, right. but it could, it could also be reductions. Yeah. That would be great. That's just the, Councilor, did just you the only comment is that's the object of the exercise of sending it back. To go down, not up. Reductions. Councilor Belanger? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Thank you, CEO. So uh, with, with that said, I'll, if it would be helpful to see what our contribution has been over 12 years of the young fund, uh, how much went into reserve, how much went into operating, not, not just the past five years. Uh, that, that would be the only comment. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? So uh, there's no doubt that uh, this council, is any, is, is, as in any council across this province, has its challenges coming forward, and they're not going to get easier, they're going to get harder. Uh, AMO has uh, been very, very clear uh, that uh, for communities to be sustainable, uh, only sustainable, they should be increasing their taxes 8 to 10 percent for the next 8 to 10 years. <laughs> Easy to say, hard to do. Uh, and so, it, uh, but in order to be sustainable, that's what AMO has said needs to happen. We all know that just isn't going to happen in any community. Um, I think it's important to note a few things to, to clear uh, a few things that uh, were said here. Um, yes, I understand that the OMP fund, uh, there was a plan in place to start at 20% and work up to 100%. Uh, and uh, uh, in the past, there's been a, a great uh, opportunity for councils to, uh, to enjoy uh, starting at 20% and then working up to, to 100%. So year one, they had 80% of that own fund to spend, uh, and then 60% and so on and so forth. And uh, so I think this council has done uh, a, a very, very good job in, in keeping it in around the 80% mark. Uh, when I would say, uh, although most communities, or sorry, not all communities receive, receive uh, the own fund, I think it's probably fair to say and safe to say that the majority who do spend most, if not all of it, on capital uh, expenditures. So, uh, this town uh, has done a very good job at, at making sure that's not the case. This council, I'm happy <coughs> to see in our first uh, uh, three years, has, has committed over $7 million back into our reserve fund, which I think is uh, commendable. Um, having said that, um, you know, it's been heard at this table tonight, and I've said it many times, that we have to find ways to generate revenue outside of raising tax dollars every year. Just go back to the taxpayer every year over and over again. Uh, and say we need more money is not sustainable either. And I think uh, it's important to note that through the downtown master plan and the redevelopment of beach area one and two and that intensification, that that is going to create substantial tax dollars that is going to help us as we move forward with our capital uh, plan and our priorities uh, as well as our expenditures. And I uh, am hopeful that we're going to do some other things or be successful in some other things in this community. Um, without speaking to any one thing in particular, that is also going to give us uh, revenues to be able to work towards that. So, yes, we have our tasks uh, set before us, and yes, it's not going to be easy, but I have all the confidence in the world that this council will make a sound decision in order to move us forward. And, uh, and uh, as you said, Madam Treasurer, we certainly need to start looking uh, or relooking at all of our plans moving forward uh, and, uh, and our reserves as to how we're going to handle these as, as these other numbers continue dwindle. There's no doubt that the province is going to continue to download by stealth, I would say, every cost they can to, uh, to individual communities. And uh, it's at this table, uh, at the council table and committee tables here in every community uh, where uh, we have to make those decisions that impact people every day of their life. And uh, that's not an easy task, but I'm confident this, this council will get, to, will get there. So I thank you for your presentation. I'll take one more question for you, and we're going to move on, Councillor Belanger. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, 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 Mayor, you have just uh, mentioned intensification. I believe at an earlier budget meeting, our CAO 
uh, talked about that too in generating new revenue. My question is, it's, uh, it's been some time since we saw the original presentations when we were studying model downtowns across North America. And if uh, memory serves me correctly, if I could uh, refer to Andrew, uh, you had given some uh, numbers <coughs> as to uh, model downtowns and the revenue generation they had as a percentage of total municipal uh, revenue. And I'm, I, I think it would be appropriate at uh, one of our next meetings if we could just review that portion of the presentation again. Uh, because I think it was uh, very significant for what we're trying to do in trying to maintain uh, taxation at a reasonable level for our residents. All right. Anything else you require of us right now, uh, Madam Treasurer? No. All right. Uh, we now uh, have a motion moved by Councillor Smith, second by Councillor Stockwell, that committee of the whole recommend to Council that it receive the Treasurer's supplementary report on the second roll of the 2018 operating capital budget discussion items and facing, uh, sorry, and financing options for information and discussion. Now, Madam Treasurer, uh, I, I want to go back to your, your uh, three options with respect to the old fund. You're looking for direction on that tonight, are you not? Okay. So, um, we'll open the floor quickly for discussion on those options, and then uh, we'll give you some direction. We'll start with uh, Deputy Mayor by Fulton. Thank you. Um, option two, reducing uh, operating capital cost by 441. Is there any particular item staff has a suggestion to remove? Um, through your worship, not yet, because we've just learned the information so recently, so we haven't had an opportunity yet to even get consideration of that. Um, we'd have to actually go back and review that department heads and see what could be done. Okay, and I guess my concern is we've already removed the, the fire truck and it's being pushed off to another year and things, so my concern with that one would be what are we removing? It's, we just have to play catch up anyway, so thank you. The one item I, uh, it's, a, it's a good point the deputy brings up, but I, I think with respect to our fleet management, we look at the number in this report tonight, 900 and some odd thousand dollars or whatever it is. I think one thing we should be looking at there is that we took a complete fleet management and pushed everything off by one year. So instead of replacing a vehicle at five years, maybe we replace a vehicle, maybe we move that by one year to six years. I think there's substantial savings there, so if we could look at that, and not just one vehicle, I'm talking all vehicles. So whatever our capital replacement plan is on all vehicles, uh, perhaps we look at moving that one more year. I think the average person doesn't keep a vehicle two, three, four, five years anymore. Uh, and uh, we all know that we've got a great fleet of vehicles here. They're well maintained. Uh, but uh, if we were to perhaps think about moving that by one year, what is that savings over the long term? Madam Treasurer. Um, Your Worship, um, we can certainly do that. However, I believe we've already done an exercise very similar to that to get to the point that we're at. And I believe that information has been suggested that if we continue to do that, eventually we put ourselves back into the position of having to catch up on those deferrals because then we get multiple vehicles coming up for renewal in the same year again. No, but if they if you take all vehicles in the fleet and whatever their capital replacement plan is, so some are five years, some are seven years, and some might be ten years, I don't know what they are, but depending on the vehicle and what it is, if you move everything by one year, now it's consistent across the board. Do you, do you understand what I'm yes, saying? Yes, I do. Okay. Yes. Mr. CAO? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think uh, our manager of fleet is here tonight, and he has a report on the agenda. So that might be something that's uh, it's later on in your agenda this evening. So perhaps that conversation could be had with the manager of fleet, because I think in his report he's done an analysis with respect to the fleet and, and the various options, and, and those types of discussions may be best held with him. And I have read that report, I'm aware of that report, and it doesn't have that option, so that's why I'm bringing it up, because we're looking to the, the Treasurer now to say what can we do to reduce costs as opposed to reducing the OAK fund contribution to reserves, what do we do to reduce capital costs? And so, I, at this point, I think, uh, you know, we, we've got to refer this back to staff to have a good look at those costs, all of those costs, and, and to come back with, with any recommendations that may have, but we'll continue the discussion. Councillor Ray? Uh, <coughs> When I look at the, the list of fleet vehicles, if we have a five-year replacement plan, there's 12 vehicles already that are 6, 7, 8, 11, uh, 25 years old. I think we're already behind. But it's the not game a five-year plan for all vehicles, Council. Okay. 
It depends on the vehicle. Okay, I borrowed the 11 year old vehicle. It's embarrassing when you're representing the town of Wasaga Beach and you pull up in a new community with a rusty 11 year old vehicle. Um, I think we're already behind, and I think to say, hey, we can make it a six year plan, just, just do whatever. I think there's a lot of information that's gone into this report. Um, I think there's a lot of thought. I think our fleet manager has. Um, you know, given us good information here. We have more money this year from that own fund than we're ever going to have again. What council is going to bite the bullet and say, yep, we have to spend a lot of money on vehicles this year. If we defer it, like councils before us maybe have, we're just going to push it on to another council that's going to have less and less of the own fund every year. So I think it's irresponsible to, uh, to push it forward. I'm not, I'm not going to comment back, except I think maybe you misunderstood my point, Councillor. Did you have your hand up, Councillor Smith? Councillor Belanger? Yeah, I'm just going to say, I've been in the automotive industry all my life, and uh, I will tell you that uh, the quality of build of vehicles is significantly different today. I think most people that drive <coughs> a vehicle today would noticeably uh, say that they have far less uh, repairs uh, other than wearing parts than what they had 10 years ago. Most of us are very aware of that. I, I agree that we have to be careful that there is a breaking point, but there's other things uh, going on with our plan, everything from you know possibly um, uh, having a casino located in our town. There's a lot of things that might generate new revenue going forward and I think this is about uh, making sure that we maintain uh, our tax base for this year and if that means uh, you know that we have to do something and uh, and look at it again in a year and uh, that's another uh, another topic for another year other questions or comments just one Councilor Smith just thought the um, option one if we <coughs> take the money that, that's not going to reserves our reserves still going to be healthy and we're not reducing the amount of our reserves they will stay consistent through your worship, um, the amount that we would have been contributing before we learned of this reduction was $441,000 more than what it's going to right. be if we choose option one. The reserves are healthy, um, and it, 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 there is some time um, available to make the right decision, but you can't um, keep pushing it out. You do need to make a decision. Uh, it's just a matter of time as to when you make the decision. All right, so um, any other comments uh, with respect to this and or suggestions as to what uh, option? All right, so I, I, I'll give you my comment. My, my option is to uh, refer this back. I believe that we should be trying to cut from the capital costs if we can uh, before we can make a firm decision whether or not we're going to contribute less to reserves or not. So once we have, uh, with a fine tooth comb, gone through all of these costs, and if that takes longer than the December 12th meeting to present this to the public, then so be it. We push that off. But it's about doing it right, not doing it fast. And so I think we need to go through each of those costs uh, in each department with a fine tooth comb to see if there are any other uh, savings. And at that point, I think council then uh, staff will be able to come back to council with a uh, a better number or another number, and or maybe not, maybe the same number then council can make an informed decision as to whether or not we reduce the amounts going to uh, reserves or we increase taxes or whatever the case that might be. Anyone have another idea or thought? All right. Clear then, Madam Treasurer? Yes, Anything else you. required? Nope, that's it. Thank you very much. All right, much. you have heard the question, council. Anyone need me to read it again? Madam Deputy Clerk. Thank you, Motion. <coughs> the motion having been read, we'll call for the vote. Councillor Belanger? In favor. Sorry, Councilor Blondin? In favor. Deputy Mayor Bifolci? In favor. Councilor Ray? I had a comment that I didn't get in. Um, in favor. Councilor Eagle? In favor. Councilor Smith? In favor. Councilor Stockwell? In favor. Mayor Smith? In favor. The vote is seven in favor and zero opposed. The motion is carried. Thank you. Moving on to item number 5J. Director of Economic Development Tourism's report. Andrew, if you join us. Welcome back. Go 
floor is yours. Yes. So, uh, thank you, members of the committee. My, my understanding, there was a request to consolidate all the items uh, in downtown that would be considered under the downtown budget for 2018. So we have done that. Uh, would you like me to give you a brief overview? Please do. Okay. Uh, okay. Very brief. Uh, number one, uh, Class EA study that's under the Director of Public Works budget, proposed at $150,000. Under Recreation Events and Facilities, there's detailed design for the Community Hub, which is $2.5 million. Uh, land acquisition cost, it's proposed as a range between 2.7 and 3.5. The reason for the range is, um, and first of all, the, the numbers that have been included here are based on the 2017 assessed value that is in our system. Um, we put a little asterisk beside that that it's subject to appraisal, which we would absolutely need to do, and, uh, and negotiation. Um, the range is because the land that is actually acquired may, may differ. Uh, we're in the midst of uh, trying to wrap up the needs assessment and that will provide us with the details of how much land we actually require. We're hoping to have that uh, early in the new year and that will give some clarity on this. But there are essentially four pieces of land that are subject to the community hub as outlined in the master plan. Pretty confident that three would likely be required. The fourth we're just not sure until we finish that process. So we've provided the range just based on whether or not we need the additional land and, and we'll know more in the, in the new year. Um, economic development, we've proposed 150,000 for the new year. That's for planning, urban design, and legal work, uh, just to continue to implement the downtown master plan. And we've also included two items that are currently underway in the, that would be funded from the 2017 budget. Uh, the first is the community needs assessment that I just referred to. That's a contract for $110,000 that's already underway and it will likely uh, spill over into January, hoping to be completed in January, maybe February at the worst case. Um, and the OP zoning bylaw and urban design guidelines committee just approved. Moving forward with that, uh, general government, that goes to council next week for <coughs> formal <coughs> approval. Um, and we would look at commencing that work immediately, subject to council approval, <coughs> and uh, we will hope to get the bulk of that work done this year, but uh, again, that may spill over into January. So we just wanted to highlight those two as being carryovers. All right, questions, Deputy Mayor by Fulci. Thank you, I made my comments um, earlier on this when the, our treasurer was at the table, but <coughs> if I'm hearing correctly, we need uh, three to four pieces of land in that area for the hub. That's the arena, that's the library, and what the staff is saying is at most it will cost three point five million. Through you, your worship, there's an asterisk beside that. That is based on twenty seventeen assessed value. We would need to conduct an appraisal. I am not an appraiser. I don't know what valuation an appraisal will put on that land. If it will differ from the assessed value, I don't know. Um, and it could be subject to negotiation, assuming that council would want to sit at a table and negotiate with landowners and not pursue expropriation. Which is always the case exactly. in each and every case, first and foremost. Deputy, go ahead. Thank you. So when, when you were looking at those properties, you looked at what they're on the market for now and took that into consideration at all, or you were just going by the assessed value? Because the reality is that they think that something's valued at a certain amount. We're going to go to expropriation. Yeah, there might be some some negotiation, but they're obviously going to fight for the most. So I'm just I'm really concerned that 3.5 is in there. I, I don't think that that's realistic. So Andrew? and we won't know. So again, the the only accurate information that we can use today is the assessed value. That's the only accurate information we have. We are aware that there are more than one piece of land that is currently for sale. And we are aware that they've been sitting for quite some time. So is it a fair market price that they're asking? I can't answer that question. An appraisal, an appraiser would have to offer his opinion on what is market value. And then it would be a negotiation. I think that's uh, the only prudent course uh, to recommend to council. Right. Mr. C.O., do you have a comment? No, I just want to echo uh, Andrew's comments with respect to this particular matter. We did, did discuss it internally and, and felt that it, it didn't make sense to speculate at all in terms of land value. What is public information? Public information is the, uh, the assessed value in the rule books and council had asked for this information so we provided it. So that's, we felt that that was the best way to present the information at this time. 
Thank you, George. Mr. Councilor Belanger? Yes, uh, just although we're calling this uh, the <coughs> summary of the downtown master plan, and in, in fact, uh, I've uh, been in this community for some time, and the replacement of the arena and the replacement of the library uh, have been, I think, supported and discussed by uh, previous councils. So uh, I just don't want people to be uh, concerned that you know that this is getting up to be a very large number. Uh, the arena and the new library is a very large number on its own, and that it, it would have taken place whether it's located in the, the downtown or whether it would have been located elsewhere. All right, thank you, Councillor Smith. Well, thank you, uh, Councillor Belanger. Uh, made my comment. All right, uh, Councillor Bray, did you have a comment? No, sorry, then it was uh, again, the mayor. Um, and I guess just to, to Councillor Bouaget's point is, if, you know, we're, yes, they were in the plan, but these land acquisitions, they're new. That, that wasn't in the plan because we do have land that those, those buildings right. could have been and built on before. just referring to the two and a half million. Well, and, and to the two and a half million, again, I have a huge concern about that number as well. Thank you. you Councillor Smith? I just so asked the uh, deputy for clarification on where we have land that big that would hold, would hold that. We have, we have land at the sports park, as an example. And how much would it cost to prepare that land? Well, uh, bring, a staff, bring a staff report forward then. Yeah, yeah because but uh, let's know those numbers. Mm -hmm. All right, any other questions or comments for Andrew? Seeing none, I'll read the question moved by Councillor Smith. Second by Councillor, uh, sorry, Councillor Stockway, that Stockwell, <laughs> that committee, what time is it? Moved by Councillor Smith and seconded by Councillor Stockwell, the Committee of the Whole recommends to Council that the report titled 2018 Consolidated Budget Request Summary Downtown Master Plan be received for information. Madam Deputy Clerk. The motion having been read, we'll call for the vote. Councillor Belanger. In favor. Deputy Mayor Bifolci. In favor. Councillor Bray. In favor. Councillor Ego. In favor. Councillor Smith. In favor. Councillor Stockwell. In favor. Mayor Smith. In favor. The vote is seven in favor and zero opposed. The motion is carried. Thank you. Moving on to item 5K, the CAO's report dated November 2017, proposed 2018 Beachfront Management Board budget. Mr. CAO. Uh, sorry, Mr. Chair, it's your report. My apologies. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, we can save a lot of time by pushing. I'll move the motion that we'll refer it back and I get a seconder uh, putting a question. So you're wanting to refer this back to the board uh, to look for further reductions, yes. is that correct? Yes. All right. Councillor Bray? Uh, thank you. And before we do, I just wanted to, to ask the chair or uh, the treasurer, different things have been moved around. So the, the entertainment, for example, for the Main Street Market has moved out of Main Street Market and has moved into beachfront events. And I'm just wondering if it could perhaps stay with the Main Street Market so we see a total cost for the Main Street Market rather than blurring the whole of the beachfront. So, uh, Madam Treasurer, do you want to join us here? It was my understanding, uh, I could be a little fuzzy here, but at one point someone asked to move that already to where it's been moved to, right? Um, I, I believe it was discussed, but it certainly was moved because um, the events uh, department coordinates all these events on the beach, and the Main Street Market budget was more for the running of the Main Street Market, so we put the uh, entertainment part of the budget under the events portion. They're still within the beachfront um, budgets in total, the, the total departmental budgets that are all grouped together. It's just under events instead of, instead of under Main Street Market because of who manages that line item. But we hired a Main Street Market coordinator, and I know you've adjusted her salary out of this, and now we've taken the entertainment out of it, so it's just we were presented with a budget for the Main Street Market and now we're kind of moving it over and I'm just not sure why. So the, the reason the reason we moved it was to align it with where the um, budget holder was administering the funds from. So they, it's events who runs those events for the Main Street Market. They spend that budget, they apply for the grant for that budget. Um, so that's why it was moved. Uh, it certainly isn't a problem to move it back. It's a matter of where is it best presented to everyone. The impact will be the same. It's just a matter of which budget uh, holder is sort of managing that particular line item. But I think the purpose, uh, Madam Treasurer, was to put everything that had anything to do with the beachfront under one budget mm -hmm. so as that uh, people would have a clear understanding of the total cost of the beachfront, right? And it is under that. So right. we have. 
the Main Street Market, the rental properties, the events, the um, Beach 1 and 2 enforcement and maintenance, and the management board. We have all of that consolidated as the beachfront budget. And important to note that of that beachfront budget, there are some new items there, but the vast majority were existing items moved from other departments under the beachfront management, correct? A, a good many of them were. So it's not all new funds? No, not right. all of it, no. All right. Uh, Deputy Mayor by Fulci. Thank you, and I guess my only <coughs> comment to that is um, we we're kind of looking at the Main Street Market as one entity, the beachfront as another. If we're putting them together, then I think it would be um, good to see some of that entertainment not always in the, the market. If we're going we're to span it out over the whole beachfront, then maybe other businesses can benefit from having something going along the beachfront as opposed to just the market. And I'd have to let the events coordinator speak, speak to that. Yeah, I can't just, just to comment. All right. So I have a motion moved by Councillor Stockwell and seconded by Councillor Ego. Read the proposed 2018 beachfront man management board budget. Be it resolved that the Committee of the Whole refer item 5K to the Beachfront Management Board for further review. Madam De Deputy Clerk. With the motion having been read, we'll call for the vote. Councilor Bellante. <coughs> In favor. Deputy Mayor by Fulci. In favor. Councilor Gray. In favor. Councilor Ego. In favor. Councilor Smith. In favor. Councilor Stockwell. In favor. Mayor Smith. In favor. The vote is seven in favor and zero opposed. The motion is carried. Thank you. Good job, Tim. Moving on to uh, item number 5i, the Director of the Recreation Events and Facilities Report. Chris, welcome back. Yep. Looking sharp. The floor is yours. Thanks very much, uh, everyone. I uh, um, am bringing back a uh, uh, enhanced report uh, regarding the design costs for the Community Hub uh, facility. Uh, obviously, we are not yet 100% uh, on what that building will contain. There are various features that are being uh, um, uh, reported back to us via our community needs assessment. So, uh, the idea behind this money is uh, th that we are organized to uh, um, initiate the design contract and uh, uh, it's certain that uh, if we want to stay uh, um, in time to uh, open our arena in 2020, that uh, we would definitely need to start designing within the next 12 months. All right, questions or comments? Deputy Mayor by Fulci. Thank you, and I guess uh, just to my point earlier, um, Councillor Smith's comments is that we're still talking about one location. If we have land other in other places, uh, there might be other things that we can be done to that land, but until we have it in front of us, it's really hard to uh, make a decision on that. 2.5 um, million for somebody else to look after this is is a lot of money, and uh, I'm not comfortable with it at this point. Thank you. Any other Councillor Eagle? Thank you. Uh, <coughs> through you. Uh, I'm not comfortable with this either, Mr. Mayor. There's not been nowhere near enough information here for me to grasp on to. Um, I don't know if other arenas have been looked at, uh, other designs, uh, talk to other communities, whether there's possibility of, of uh, getting some of their designs. Maybe if, uh, if we were going ahead with this, uh, I think there's a lot more work to be done before we even talk about getting to a design process yet. Thank you. Councilor Bray. Uh, thank you. Again, before I approve two and a half million dollars, I would like to see <coughs> a comparison of the cost of building um, an arena downtown versus an arena out of the sports park where we already own the land. I know Councillor Smith has uh, indicated that it would be very expensive to build out there, but we don't know. We're being asked to make a decision without all the facts. And then just moving forward, because this is coming in as a community hub, I would like to reach out to Chris and ask if maybe the library could co-author these reports with you, because that library is an integral part of this community hub, and I would just like to see their input on the report. Um, when they come to council, because I think they're, um, you know, they're fifty percent of what we're building for the community. I think they really do need to have some input. And whether they're separate buildings or they're in one building, having toured a number of buildings that shared space, it's really important that they're there at the ground level. Councilor Belanger, uh, sorry, uh, Chris, did you want to respond to that? Yes, uh, there are two questions, I guess, uh, that, that I hoped to respond to. Uh, definitely, uh, first, at uh, Councillor Eagle's comment about uh, uh, where we are in the process uh, uh, regarding signing on to 
a, a design. This money would only be dedicated to a design that we agreed based on the report that is yet to be seen from our community needs assessment. So I agree with Councillor Eagle that we should not get into the designing of a building until we are 100% uh, in favor that the building should include arenas, libraries, etc. And that process is unfolding and I've given some detail to that in my report and uh, uh, we are looking to an architectural firm uh, to help us understand what aspects that building should uh, include based on uh, our community needs, our size, uh, et cetera. So uh, I do think that we will have significant analysis on the actual makeup of that building. And uh, uh, in my experience, we will also work with the design uh, consultants to uh, uh, fine-tune the, the cost and the uh, uh, the makeup of the final building and, and this is a process that will unfold with the architect in step two so what we're doing with our needs assessment is trying to understand a basic plan that we can go to tender on and there will be uh, uh, community uh, uh, public uh, meetings on that process and uh, I think a variety of options and costing as well so uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to give some clarification on that because uh, we weren't agreeing to hiring an architect for a building we don't know. Do you wish to respond to that, Council? Yes. Um, have you put any thought into a tall about uh, maybe organizing a fact-finding committee to go and look at these other arenas and, and bring something back uh, to give us an idea of what uh, the other municipalities have done in this aspect and where <coughs> they are, the amount of parking we need, all the, all the things, uh, and what these other buildings have put into it? because there's been about five hubs built in Ontario, sports hubs built in Ontario in the last five years. And there's some beautiful ones out there and there's some that aren't so good. And I'd like to see this sort of a committee put together or a small fact-finding group to go out and look at these and talk to the CAOs and find out you know, what it cost to build these arenas, what they needed required for parking, and whether they were downtown or out in the suburbs. <coughs> and I'd, I'd like all this information before I can agree to anything. Yes, oh, sorry. Mr. CAO. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just, uh, just to that comment, and certainly from staff's perspective, we are, there will be a report coming forward, which we will be proposing a steering committee to go and look at exactly what you've been talking about, uh, <coughs> Councillor. <coughs> work has already started in, in that regard, both from in our staff and from the library. They've been doing a lot of work as well. But uh, this, this report only deals with the, the amount of money for the design. There are other reports to come forward. This is just a budget item. It's like a placeholder in the budget to set aside, say we're going to have $2.5 million for the design. We still need to get a steering committee up and running. There's a whole other series of steps that uh, need to take place uh, with respect to this design. And, um, I know the department head has been working on that. We have been working on it as a team within our within the within the municipality, and there will be a further report coming forward with that structure, with how we're going to go about doing it. Right now, this is just the money for the design, the design piece <coughs> in the budget. Your comments are well taken, and certainly, uh, councillor, you've said them around the table at other meetings, and certainly from our perspective, <coughs> we think what you've suggested is the way to go, and that work has already started, and will be formalized as we move forward. All right, your next, uh, your next, uh, is this a question for this, the arena in particular? Yes. Okay, Councillor Smith. Just a point of order, I think um, Chris was going to answer my question about co-authoring the reports with the library moving forward. Yeah, that was your second, that was the second point, but we're just still still on the arena part, person. so yeah. we'll get there. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to ask, and well, the treasurer's here could help, um, how much have we got in reserves for the, the arena replacement? Madam Treasurer, do you have that number um, memorized? I, I don't have that number no. directly. Well, we can so get that. I can get that. Yeah, okay. there's some consideration there as well. All right, one more question with yeah. respect to the arena portion. Yes, do, well, just a point of clarification. Uh, Councillor Bray had questioned whether the two and a half million is more because of the location. When we're talking design, that two and a half million, it, it doesn't matter where the location is, the design is the same cost. Uh, for the building, is that not correct? Uh, absolutely, that's okay. correct. Yes. The, you the only other uh, exactly. point I wanted to make, Chair, is that I read quite a lengthy article. Uh, uh, Sudbury is uh, in the midst of uh, not only doing a uh, arena but also a cultural center, 
and uh, they, they also have some difference of opinion, but uh, they're pushing very hard to have both of those facilities located in their core. All right, part two of your answer, Chris? Chris? Yes, <laughs> only to give the, the, the Councillor Bray confidence in the, the discussion. Definitely this report was reviewed by uh, our, our uh, the CEO and librarian and director of library services, uh, and uh, it is our intention to have her included on all of these discussions. She did uh, attend the one meeting that we had with the uh, consultant, the architect uh, firm that we're working with uh, on the community assessment as well. Okay. Councillor, further, further to that, the library board has toured uh, between six and eight libraries that are part of community hubs. So a lot of that information, um, you know, what works and what doesn't work, is why we really <coughs> kind of need to be there with you. There's a lot of things that won't work for the library really well um, if you design a beautiful sports park. We need to work together to make it work for for both parts of the communities because their needs are quite different. Well, I think it would be very difficult to sell. Um, to the public, putting the library out at Sports Park. So I think when we're looking at the economies of scale, we have to look at two things. We're either going to build a hub, which is what the province is pushing for, uh, within the community that will include several uh, facilities, which the economies of scale are going to be uh, astronomical in the savings and doing several things in one building as opposed to building separate bricks and mortar throughout the community. So there, there's no doubt that uh, there's lots to look at. I'm sure staff has understood and, and gets what council is saying. Uh, but, uh, you know, a, a huge cost I see for anything out of the sports park today is there's no water and sewer at the sports park. If you build an arena at the sports park, they use a lot of water and they use a lot of sewer. So uh, these, are, these are issues that I'm sure staff will look at and consider. Uh, as we move through this, but uh, as it's been indicated, this 25 million is a placeholder in the budget. So when we get to that point, if it is in 2018, staff can move forward with the design process. Is that correct, Chris? Yes. Thank you. Deputy Mayor, oh, sorry, uh, Councillor Smith, I took your question, sorry. Deputy Mayor by Fulci. Thank you. Uh, just to clarify, I was never suggesting that the library be out at the sports park. Um, the arena would be a good fit. Um, but when something does come back, I'd also like an update on the property that was in Stonebridge that was originally discussed for a library as well. I think that's kind of been dropped off and I haven't heard anything about it uh, for quite some time. Councillor Mr. through you to the director. This architect that you keep talking about, is he under contract? That's correct, yes. Yeah, the Fork for, uh, Partners uh, is the architectural firm. They're, they're working with CBRE on this community needs assessment. Yeah. And <coughs> the bill will be picked up by... Sorry, let's not confuse the community needs assessment with the architect. You well said the architect. Oh, oh the architect. okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes. So the architect, we don't have an architect under contract. No, we do not. It's an architectural <laughs> firm who's helping us understand the components <coughs> of the community. But are they billing us? Yes, they are. Yes. Yes. Not for the design, for the needs assessment study. <coughs> we, uh, I, I there, there are two, there are two very separate things, right? So, so, and I think it's important <laughs> at this point that staff explain that to council. A needs assessment study and uh, architectural design for a building are two very, very different things. So, Andrew or Chris, someone uh, please explain so we're clear. Yeah. So, so council approved moving forward with Forec and CBRE to help us undertake a community needs assessment. I remember that. And that is being funded from the 2017 budget. I just spoke to that as potentially carrying over into 2018. That will help us understand exactly what should go into the hub based on all the community feedback we're doing today. They will do a concept drawing and essentially position us to put out an RFP to retain the consultant that would then design, do the detailed design. Um, I also just wanted to ask clarification. When Council approved the Downtown Master Plan, one of the recommendations was that the community hub go on the piece of land on Main Street. Mm -hmm. We are operating under that direction until, and the direction read, unless there is some reason that it shouldn't go there. So if Council would like us to explore other locations, um, could you provide us with that direction or we will proceed under the course of, of action that we are currently operating under. And I just wanted to add one other one other item. As part of our work, we do intend to hold a community meeting. I'm going to predict we'll have four to 500 people show up. That's been our pattern. 
and we will go into detail as to why that's the site we're recommending, what all is going in here, what we learned from the community, what the next steps are. So people will have an opportunity to ask those questions. My strong recommendation to Council would be not to deviate from the direction that you have given us already and to keep the hub on the piece of land that you have already recommended that we pursue. All right, uh, Councilor, or sorry, Deputy Mayor Bifold, she was next. Thank you. I, again, I, I think if we have um, land that was already, there was, I forget the details of it, but there was land in Stonebridge, if that is at a lesser cost, um, I think we have to consider that. To just say, you know, Council approved this, all that other information wasn't presented to us at the time that I recall. So all that information needs to come forward to just sit here and say you chose the hub and don't deviate from that. I have a real problem with that. We have other options and I think they need to come to this table. Councillor Belanger? Yeah, just a couple of quick things because we've been to a lot of conferences. We've had a lot of discussion with uh, different members of government related to community hubs. It's certainly my understanding is that as far as uh, provincial and federal funding and grants, uh, <coughs> to get our best bang for our buck, there's probably going to be a community hub. I recall the meetings when uh, the number one thing of our residents requiring in this town was arts and culture. We've talked often about uh, building a two-pad arena, but one of those pads would initially be a venue uh, for arts and culture. It could be a convertible venue, so that even when we went to a second pad. And again, when you talk about something for events or theater, uh, that type of thing, uh, again, it's uh, the sports park is certainly not a great location. So this is a lot more than just considering where we're putting an arena. And uh, a community hub is our best bet uh, for OPM, other people's money, and uh, and that's important. We we send tons of tax dollars out of this community year after year after year. And the government provides grants to other communities, and this is our opportunity to uh, claw back a lot of that money and get grants coming into our community. Thank you, Councillor. Sorry, Andrew, and then Councillor Ego. Yeah, and just to add to that. Um, the province's definition of a hub is building in proximity. It can be attached, it can be adjacent, but they want a concentration of uses. If we start pulling the potential hub apart and putting an arena out in a sports park and a library over on, you no longer have a hub. The reason why the province promotes hubs and has come to the table to fund other hubs is because it's efficient. It's efficient use of land efficient use of building. There are substantial synergies and cost savings when you co-locate buildings. If you have a, a high school adjacent to a library, adjacent to an arena, you don't need to build the multiple gyms and multiple auditoriums. You share. You share parking so you don't have to build um, a substantial amount of excess parking that you would if you pulled everything apart. This will all be addressed in the public meeting. We will explain this to the community. Um, you can nickel and dime now, but in the end, you're gonna end up paying more if you pull it all apart and start spreading it all over town. And first and foremost, you will never achieve the vibrant downtown and the vibrant Main Street that I think Council's objective is to achieve. It's very important that you achieve all of that co-located. I'm going to give Councillor Eagle the last say on this because we're getting, although we're on topic, a little off topic, this is really about approving $2.5 million for the design process, not where and how it should be placed. So that's the answer questions, the question that Council will need to answer as soon as you speak, Councillor Eagle. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, all I was going to say was uh, just about the downtown or where it's going. The, the City of Ottawa has just in the paper this week stated that they're closing their big sports park out in Canada, which is 40 miles outside of the downtown, because it is not economical, feasible, um, money-wise. And it's costing them millions of dollars uh, that they figured they have lost by putting that big, beautiful building out in Canada. And they give the NHL the option that if they don't move it to downtown, or they don't get a new building downtown, uh, they'll be moving the franchise out of there. So that's how important it is to have a, uh, a hub, a library, or a cultural center 
in your downtown. So that's all I got to say. Thank you very much. All right, I'm going to read the question one more time. It is moved by Councillor Smith, Smith and seconded by Councillor Blanger. The Committee of the Whole recommends to Council that it consider approving up to two and a half million dollars contained in the 2018 budget for the purpose of contracting a prime consulting, i.e., sorry, e.g., architectural or project management firm at a tendered price to design, cost, and oversee the bidding and selection process of a generic, con sorry, a general contractor for the new municipal arena and library. We're done with questions for us, Madam Deputy Clerk. Oh, sorry. <laughs> with the motion having been read, we'll call for the vote. Councillor Belanger? In favor. Deputy Mayor Bicolci? Opposed. Councillor Ray? Yeah. I'd like to stand. That's a no vote. That's a no vote. Okay, I'm missing information and I'm not able to ask any questions, so I will abstain. Uh, Councillor Ego? Opposed. Councillor Smith? In favor. Councillor Stockwell? Opposed. Mayor Smith? In favor. So three in favor and four opposed. The motion is defeated. All right. Moving on to item number 5M. Uh, this is a uh, three to the whole. Director of Recreation, Events and Facilities again. Chris, the floor is still yours. That's correct. Uh, um, the, the report before you is uh, regarding four budget enhancements that were uh, um, sent back for more information from staff. Um, I've uh, uh, reiterated discussions regarding uh, Snowman Mania, uh, a budget item uh, to be enhanced from the 2017 uh, uh, budget of uh, twenty-three thousand uh, dollars. I believe that this is a uh, a, a realistic cost, uh, and there are details uh, uh, surrounding the exact uh, uh, uses of those funds. Um, and, and I might add that they are much in keeping with uh, the last few years on how we have been operating this snowman uh, event. Uh, second is the multi-sport camp. Uh, there were specifics about uh, um, the uh, the costs, and uh, I think an element of risk uh, that uh, should we not uh, attract enough participants, that we might start to uh, um, exceed our revenues with expenses. I think that there is a reasonable threshold at 25 percent. So should our plan fall short by 25 percent, I think we would still be at a, uh, a zero cost to the municipality. Uh, but uh, understanding that this is an opportunity for us to start to establish uh, a full uh, uh, summer uh, vacation uh, day camp opportunity for our uh, residents, uh, I think that it is uh, a, a reasonable risk uh, and we can uh, manage the budget within that threshold and not cancel. Um, I, I, there are two uh, other uh, ideas that I need to highlight uh, that, that were uh, in this report. Uh, the third one is the uh, youth center garage renovation. Uh, a, a, a new ren uh, revenue strategy has been put forth in this uh, uh, report, and uh, what was originally going to be straight thirty thousand uh, dollar investment to uh, make accessible washrooms and expand the meeting room and the. Uh, garage at the youth center has now been split uh, into three pots, uh, conditional on the uh, senior center grant uh, uh, coming uh, uh, to the town. We would uh, invest uh, $10,000 uh, more or less earmarked through the seniors program in, in our capital budget. 10,000 earmarked to the youth center in our capital budget and leave the remaining 10 to be fundraised five by the seniors groups and five by the uh, uh, group. So, uh, and last but not least, uh, there was uh, quite a bit of discussion regarding the volunteer uh, database uh, and the program in general. And uh, to summarize regarding volunteers, we had originally um, uh, put forth an option in the 2018 budget to continue the Trillium funding uh, that, that uh, will expire in March uh, and that uh, idea was defeated and uh, uh, further to that we have uh, two options and they're put forth in this report uh, that uh, um, should the seniors grant uh, be awarded to the town we can fully fund uh, and continue for the next nine months uh, with our volunteer uh, uh, 
program uh, administration, but uh, should we not be successful, uh, the second alternative option is that uh, we put a one day a week for a frontline administrative staff person to at least keep the database uh, um, up to date and then revert all the programming discussion back to uh, staff in their specific areas. And uh, uh, this would involve uh, the youth coordinator looking after volunteers that help at the youth center, uh, the events, uh, the senior events coordinator looking after all of the events volunteers, but merely to have one administrative person to look after uh, all, all of the database management, uh, which is important. It's uh, the training you know, requirements and the uh, criminal record checks, etc. So that's four big. Uh, uh, explanations for reasonably uh, uh, valued enhancements to the 2018 budget of my department. But, uh, I welcome any <coughs> questions if there are. Madam Treasurer, just to be clear, these four items are included in the 2.16 or over and above? Um, I'm sorry, um, I'm not sure. Can I just get back to you? Absolutely. Now? Yeah, I just I just wanted to be clear for, uh, for yeah. council and the public as to where before we go on this. I'll open the floor in the meantime for questions from Council. Councilor Stockwell? I have no questions. I just want to speak. With respect to this item, Council? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, thanks. Mr. Mayor, we spent the last hour or so wringing our hands on, on the budget and, uh, and what we're up against it and the, and the uh, cutbacks by the province. And then we finally get that back and then we deal with this and we're increasing budgets. I mean, I'm just voting against it. I mean, sure, it's only 23,000 here, 23,000 there. But if we're going to get serious, let's get serious. Right across the board. That's why I've asked the, uh, the treasurer to confirm whether it's included in the 2.16 right. already or not. And either whether it is or it isn't, I'm going to be against it. All right. Any other questions or comments? Councillor Bray? Yeah, I think it would be a shame to vote against the entire thing. I think the summer camp is one of the great opportunities that would over time grow and actually become one of those revenue generating items for the town and would also provide a service to the residents. So I don't think the whole thing is, uh, I think it's quite creative that you're still looking to, you know, to fund improvements through, through grants, through fundraising, through, so I don't want to just say no to the whole report. I think there's some really good things in it. Right. Councillor Belanger? Uh, so obviously, I'd like to know whether it's included or not in the budget, but I mean, snowman mania, my understanding of this is this is not $23,000 into it in addition to what we spent last year. This is to bring it up to what we spent last year. It's a great event. Like, I mean, at the end of the day, we do deliver uh, experiences for our residents. This is uh, quite a residence event, and uh, I was at the event last year, and it was quite a happening place. and. Uh, I, you know, I think when we look at uh, the amounts of money and some of them with conditions of fundraising and grants being received, um, I, I think that uh, we need to find a way. I'm certainly going to support uh, these additions. Madam Treasurer, welcome back. Thank you. You have an uh, answer? The uh, Snowman Mania. Youth Center Garage and the Children's Multi Sport Summer Camp are all excluded at this time. And the one day extra week is included. Okay. All right, so that answers your question, uh, Councillor, as well. Councillor Ego? Yeah, I just <coughs> have some concerns, uh, Mr. Mayor, with the snowmania. I mean, uh, I think I recall when this first started off, it was run by the, the community, if I remember correctly. And I think the cost to run it at that time was about $5,000 or $6,000. This has gone up to uh, quite a hike from there, but there's some things on here I just don't understand. Uh, $6,000 for super dogs and $5,000 for a basketball demo and, and things like that there. I mean, if these things are going to go on, I think that they should be sponsored by outside people. This is an awful cost to, uh, to burden for, for things of this nature. And uh, I just think the uh, budget is way too high for, uh, for this event. Thank you. Other questions or comments? I, uh, I understand that another $23,000 to bring us up to what we've already been spending is a substantial amount of money. But this event is attended by the citizens of Wasaga Beach for the most part. This is not, a, it's not an event that's for tourism, although it is starting to become a tourist attraction. I can tell you that uh, the last two years I received 
emails from uh, outside people who live outside of Wasaga Beach uh, commending us on uh, it being such a great event and, and the one thing they both indicated was that they had no idea that we did it so maybe we need to advertise it out and about a little more than we do today um, we spent a lot of a lot of a lot of time and money in the summertime uh, to attract to attract tourists and uh, and uh, I believe that this is uh, certainly uh, an amenity that uh, we offer the citizens of Wasaga Beach in the middle of the winter and we've got the wintertime blues uh, to be able to get out and enjoy our community for what it's worth and uh, I support it hundred percent so um, I'm going to suggest that perhaps uh, we split this uh, this uh, report or this motion uh, thank you councillor uh, into four different uh, motions and uh, vote on them separately if there's any other suggestions or comments before we do that now do you want me just to read each one and then uh, you, you'll record it uh, yeah all right that'll be easier uh, so <coughs> we're going to split this into four uh, the mover and second are councillor smith councillor stockwell you're fine with that yeah um, I, I second it so i can vote against it that's correct but you're fine with splitting it into four Mr. Smith? Uh, no, I just wanted to make a comment. Uh, the marketing, because the Tourism Committee has identified this as a, a potential uh, tourism event, um, I'm just wondering if the marketing dollar, 10500 can go through the marketing budget that the Tourism Committee has. So, so it's definitely certainly look into it. Yeah. Yes, I can look into that, although I can't speak to that budget exactly at this yeah. time. Uh, have a that's, that's, that's understandable. All right, so both uh, members are okay. So I'll just read these individually. Is that right, <coughs> Madam Clerk? All right, so I uh, move by Councillor Smith, seconded by Councillor Stockwell. The Committee of the Whole recommends to Council that it approve the Enhanced Snowman Mania budget of $23,000. With the motion having been read, we'll call for the vote. Councillor Belanger? In favor. Deputy Mayor by Fulton? In favor. Councillor Bray? In favor. Councillor Eagle? In favor. Councillor Smith? In favor. Councillor Stockwell? Opposed. Mayor Smith? In favor. The vote is uh, six in favor and one opposed. The motion is carried. All right, and further that, Committee of the Whole recommends to Council that enhance the 2018 Recreation Program offering and approve a multi-sport summer camp trial program at the estimated net cost of zero dollars. With the motion having been read, we'll call for the vote. Councillor Belanger? In favor. Deputy Mayor by Fulci? In favor. Councillor Bray? In favor. Councillor Eagle? In favor. Councillor Smith? In favor. Councillor Stockwell? In favor. Mayor Smith? In favor. The vote is seven in favor and zero opposed. The motion is carried. And further, that committee of the whole recommends to Council that it approve renovations to the garage located on the Youth Centre property at 1621 Mosley Street as part of the 2018 capital budget at a cost not to exceed $30,000 contingent on both the town being selected as the recipient of the Seniors Community Grant and $10,000 being fundraised for the renovation and support of the additional space for the youth and seniors program. So in essence, we're looking at worst case scenario, a $10,000 cost uh, or addition to the budget, correct? That's correct. And do you agree with that, Madam Treasurer? Um, previously, we had an amount of 30,000, so we're okay at 10. So if, if, 30 is, if 10 is gonna come out of that from the grant, the seniors okay. grant, if we're successful, and 10 is coming from fundraising, then it'll only be a capital cost to the town of 10,000. So just so council is clear on that, Madam Deputy Clerk. Uh, with the motion having been read, we'll call for the vote. Councilor Belanger? In favor. Deputy Mayor by Fulci? In favor. Councilor Bray? In favor. Councilor Eagle? In favor. Councilor Smith? In favor. Councilor Stockwell? Opposed. Mayor Smith? In favor. The vote is six in favor and one opposed. The motion is carried. And further, that committee of the whole recommends to council that it approve a staffing enhancement to the Recreation Events and Facilities Department for one day a week provide administrative support to volunteer programming managers across all municipal, municipal departments at a cost of six thousand one hundred and seventy five dollars and twenty one cents was it confirmed this is already in the budget yeah okay. so we're not adding this to the that's correct so with the motion having been read we'll call for the vote councillor belanger in favor deputy mayor by Fulci. in favor councillor bray in favor councillor eagle in favor <coughs> councillor smith in favor councillor stockwell opposed Mayor Smith. In favor. The vote is six in favor and one opposed. The motion is carried. All right, moving on to item number five N, manager of beachfront property fleet purchasing report to Mr. Uh, Dooney. Welcome. This is 
the uh, 2018 budget for you report, correct? Yes, you have the report there before you. Uh, we have uh, gone through it. We have provided, uh, have provided the uh, options that the uh, last thing we were, that was requested for the purchase versus lease versus rental. It's there before you. Um, the fleet is an extensive fleet that we do have here at the town. Uh, it has been consolidated to one fleet from the various departments that we've had in the past. Um, <coughs> we've looked at, we were looking at various equipment this year to purchase for the uh, various departments' needs, and we've looked at other options as well as the, you see in the report, the uh, purchase versus lease versus rental. And we're looking at trying to create a uh, secondary uh, group of vehicles that come out of the fleet, but we can hang on to another year or two, uh, which would go coincide with the idea that, uh, um, Your Worship, you mentioned earlier, that maybe we can continue to keep some of these vehicles. And these vehicles are the vehicles that would be required to be used for, uh, not on a full-time basis, more on a summertime basis, when really everyone all the departments are requesting for additional vehicles because of that, whether it's bylaw, whether it's uh, uh, parks, whether it's uh, uh, the building department, uh, beachfront, uh, the new beachfront uh, maintenance uh, that, that goes on down there. So we're looking at trying to, to keep these vehicles for another year or two that we can still keep. They're not gonna be heavily used, they'll be lightly used for the summertime months so that we don't have to purchase another vehicle or rent another vehicle or lease another vehicle. Um, we have uh, other, the other vehicles that, that, that are mentioned. We have removed, deleted a uh, considerable amount of uh, vehicles from the request that came from the various departments and the report that did for you. We'll take any questions if you have any questions. Questions or comments, uh, Councillor Gray? What's the total fleet size? So I know there was 25 on your list of recommended replacements, but what's the total number of vehicles in the fleet? The total number of vehicles in the fleet, uh, Just a we're talking the bigger equipment. We're well over 16, vehicles. So I can get an accurate number for you. So 40% are on kind of the replacement list. We've already deferred a number of them. Yes, yeah, outside of the first, on the recommendation list that you have, the first nine to really uh, come, come up from the uh, new initiative that the town has. Uh, the remaining are from the other departments. Okay. Other so questions? Was, okay, so there was, just to be clear, so there was 15, vehicles that were recommended kind of under a regular replacement schedule. There was 15 that were recommended replacement of which we at this point got nine. Um, so then my only other comment is that <coughs> at the last meeting we deferred the rescue truck and we said, hey, let's do that next year. Again, I'd like to bring that back for consideration <coughs> because that only fund is going to uh, get smaller every year. It's never going to get any easier to replace this truck. I think to, to drop below the North American standards <coughs> for fire safety within our community is a poor decision from this council. I think we need to look after our residents, we're a growing community, and I would like to see the, the rescue truck added back into the purchases for 20. Councillor Melanchi. Uh, just a question and maybe a, another possible option. Like, you know, I look at, uh, you know, 560000 for a, a sewer flusher truck at 11 years old. Like, I, I got to believe that if you wanted to go out on the open market and sell a used 11-year-old sewer flusher truck, that it probably has limited value. What, what, what about considering that we uh, start uh, putting into reserve instead of the $560,000 replacement? That you put in, you know, a hundred thousand or a hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year, and run that truck and get as much mileage out of it as you possibly can. Maybe it can go sixteen years. Maybe it can go fourteen years. But start to put the money aside and try to run that. It's not like, you know, in a normal fleet, uh, when we had salesmen, uh, <coughs> we we picked a mileage because after that mileage, when you went to resell that vehicle, there was a substantial drop in value. But when you start talking specialty vehicles, uh, I, I don't believe you have the same situation. 11-year-old truck is, uh, of this specialty is probably not worth a lot of money, but could potentially be maintained and get another three, four years of good service. Uh, I don't know that for a fact, but that's one thing we could consider is just on some of those specialty vehicles, uh, putting aside a certain amount of money every year until it actually needs to be replaced. 
Councillor Smith. Yes, thank you. I just wondered if there's another option. Um, did we look at um, buying used equipment? Uh, we have done that in the past. We used equipment that typically we have purchased uh, years gone by were vehicles that were let go by other municipalities that the cost to maintain them was way beyond. Uh, we, we've gotten away from that practice. We, we were able to now to, to, to uh, purchase the vehicles. But I do remember the days that when we used to buy a used vehicle, it would be in the shop almost every other week whether there's a hole in the body and the packer uh, and it's uh, sometimes it's, it's not even to to hold a vehicle like that on the road with now the MTO really enforcing and going after the trucks on the highway it's very very difficult to try to maintain and keep a vehicle in good standing order that uh, can be easily taken apart by the MTO they'll find something guaranteed when you get the vehicle that age on the roadway um, that uh, that they can easily find, and then uh, that would affect our CBR rating uh, if we get fined and uh, ticketed that way too. That would affect the whole overall license that we have to maintain these vehicles. Uh, just if I can make a comment, the sewer water uh, flusher truck that's here won't have an impact to taxation. That's out of completely out of the sewer water rates of uh, that vehicle there. Uh, just as an example, thank you. But all right, uh, Councillor, uh, sorry, Deputy Mayor by Fulci. Thank you. Um, just to Councillor Belanger's comment about the, the sewer flusher truck, my concern would be um, you don't just you don't just walk onto a, a truck lot and get one of those. So if it breaks down, that means we're not servicing the community. So I think that there's um, reasons that you have to plan for it. You don't just wait till it dies and then think you're just going to grab one. So I think we need to plan for those things. Other questions or comments? Uh, yep. Sorry, Julian, and then. Uh, Right, George. If I may say that due to the, the, the geography of our municipality, and it's not a very large uh, in, in the south of space, it's just it is large in, in east west routes, but we don't typically find that the, the mileage that we have can be misleading on the vehicles. The vehicles do get a lot of idle time. A vehicle like the sewer flusher truck has auxiliary engines that are used. Uh, and in the capacity of, of the utilization of the vehicle, but there's a lot of idle time on these vehicles They might not be driving, you know, half an hour an hour away to get to a job Typically like you would get into a larger city because we're very compact So it can be misleading sometimes the mileage on a smaller vehicle. I absolutely agree Let's take a look at it if we can extend it. We have done that to some vehicles. Let's extend it There's one or two vehicles that I'd like to try to keep but it's not that I'm just gonna flush them out of the system and throw it out to to the auction, I'd like to keep those in reserve for <coughs> those vehicles that, that other departments are looking for new vehicles. Well, hey, let's utilize <coughs> this. Uh, maybe we've got to do a, a little bit of cleanup on it, a little bit, spend a little bit of money, but not a lot of money, to just maintain it for another couple of years and try to keep it in the fleet. That way to help uh, alleviate the need that, that's there right now. Mr. CAO? Thank you, Worship. I just wanted to address uh, Councillor Belanger's comment with respect to setting money aside, and that, that is in fact what the municipality does do uh, with its forecast, its capital uh, equipment forecast. We do set money aside as part of our reserve fund contribution, so money is put in the reserves uh, for a period of time, over six, seven, eight, maybe ten years, to help pay for the cost of that replacement vehicle. So we do these forecasts based on the expected life and then there's an analysis done and that that may shift a year maybe two years based on the analysis in that particular year when that vehicle comes up for replacement but the point i'm making is is that we do put money aside for the life of the vehicle in our reserve fund so that when we have to replace it we have money in the reserves to pay either full amount or as in the policy a 50 50 uh, balance in the in the year that it's uh, determined that it needs to be replaced any other questions or comments? Councillor Smith? Thank you, Your Worship. I, I just have a really hard time with the, the total amount. <laughs> um, I, I just wanted a clarification on this $294,000 uh, by taxation. Um, I don't know if there's some way we can, I, I hate to cut into reserves that much, but if, if that is reserves for vehicles only, or is this our total? Reserves. So the 934 you're seeing, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, uh, Madam Treasurer, uh, is uh, total. So 550 or 560, that for example, is not included, is not taxation because it's covered from reserves. Mm -hmm. So that brings it down to less than half. 
So we'll only be looking at the increase in taxation from the vehicles that aren't covered out of a reserve fund uh, that would need to be purchased, which would then become a taxation issue. 294 is the impact to taxation for the vehicles that are listed. Uh, some of the vehicles, uh, as there's one one here that's 90 percent diesel recoverable, that uh, it's only 10 percent affected by the reserves. The sewer flusher truck is coming out of completely out of the sewer water uh, sewer rates. It uh, has no impact uh, at all on on the uh, taxation. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Bray. Mr. Comment. I'd like to make a motion to purchase the fire truck to add it back into the. Uh, the 2018 budget of 550000 and perhaps uh, the Treasurer could certainly recommend funding, but we could consider the OMPF fund, uh, again, as it's the highest it's ever going to be for the next 20 years, and I think it's never going to get any easier to buy it. We need it. Let's buy it. All right. Do you have someone to second that motion? We're seconded by uh, Deputy Mayor by Fulci. While we're waiting on that motion, right. are there any other questions or comments? So I have a few questions and comments, and, and uh, I want to be clear to staff, this is no reflection of you or or your abilities. It's just simple questions to uh, help me wrap my head around this. So uh, the skid steer is the first one I want to speak to, $30,000, and my understanding that the, the issue given or the reason given for a skid steer was to uh, be able to get into the tight spaces in the winter for snow removal, so on and so forth, uh, in case there was a fire and, and whatnot. And I understand that. However, for many, many years now that when the town didn't own these buildings, uh, those areas were never cleaned and had there been a fire, and there was, the fire department got down there and uh, they got they got where they had to get, and I would assume if there's a fire in one of these old buildings down there, they're probably going to be uh, hopefully taking their time getting there, uh, but uh, at the end of the day when they get there, they're going to be fighting that uh, to try and save the buildings around it as opposed to the building, because I, I would... I'm looking over at the deputy chief, but I would assume any of these buildings are going to move pretty quick when they, once they get going. And he's nodding his head, yes. Yeah, so I, I'm struggling to buy a skid steer for, for such a, you know, if we need to get that cleaned up, when we have a sidewalk vehicle or whatever that's not busy on any given day, when it's not snowed and they're sitting in the yard and we know that happens, then we could take them down there and, and do that. Um, the zero turn lawnmower, I understand that and I, I have no issue with it. The orc rake, the same. Trailer, no issue. Uh, the four-door mid-size utility vehicle uh, recommended no impact to taxation. I understand that, but 10%. <coughs> what is that used for, uh, Giuliano? Are you talking about item 18? Item 10. Oh, sorry, item 10. Uh, that's the building department. Uh, they they have they're self-funded through their department, and they have several vehicles. <coughs> and what they do is they'll pass them down, pass them down until they get to the. To the bottom one, and the bottom one is is in need of, of replacement. I there's some painting that I might have to do to keep that in the fleet. It's one of the vehicles I'd like to keep in the fleet. It's one of them that might have to do a little bit more money to try to to uh, uh, keep it going for another year or two. Um, but again, that that be one that that self funded through that department. That, for lack of better words, uh, I'm, I'm I'm almost taking that for nothing to put in this pool because that's that's already paid for through that uh, department. Okay, is that currently an eight-cylinder vehicle? Sorry? Is that currently an eight-cylinder vehicle? Uh, no, I believe that's a six-cylinder vehicle. Six -cylinder. So 133. Or, or so it's a four-cylinder vehicle, I think. You're correct, four-cylinder. Right. It's a Ford Escape. It's oh, a it's a Ford. Yeah. Okay, well, it indicates here, sorry, a four-door mid-size utility. Okay, yes, Ford Escape. Thank you. <coughs> uh, the ice resurfacer we've dealt with, the minivan, 145K, 11 years old. What, what is that? Is that minivan for? Is that... Just a the general purpose vehicle? Is, is replacing the uh, foreman's, uh, has that vehicle right now. It is in, in need of replacement. Um, uh, uh, the, the vehicle is used extensively to move things around. He needs the minivan styled so he can multi purpose that vehicle. Uh, that's And he's looking at a vehicle similar to that again. Worship, that's, uh, that vehicle is assigned to the facility uh, oh. manager who does. Um, Sorry, facility foreman who works out of the arena but also is responsible for the various facilities in the municipality. It is the van that is used corporately if we have to go on an excursion and because it does have seats in the back that can fit up to seven or eight, eight people. So it does serve that purpose and the facility foreman does does give it up for that purpose, recognizing that that's what it was intended for. All right, and I'm seeing the rescue truck now. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the last meeting we had, the rescue truck was pegged at 25 years old. 
Here I'm seeing 24 years old. So is it 24 or 25? Uh, I have, from the information I have, it, it, uh, I believe it'll be 25 in 2018. Yes, if you can refer, because that was the fire chief reporting to you directly on that. That's correct, yeah. It will turn 25 next year. That's right. Okay, and our replacement on that is that when it's 25 years old. <coughs> 25, so to that's push that's that off one more year would be the right time to do it then. Well, would you like me to, to speak to, to the rest of your truck at all or answer any No, I just, I'm just asking. So if we replace it when it's 25 years old, it's, it's 25 not 25 years old. years old right now, correct? That's right. We're asking to replace it when it's 25 years old. Okay. Which Thank you. Uh, and then um, the sport track, this is a... Uh, what is this vehicle? Is this a pickup truck? The sport track is a, a vehicle that we had. That that vehicle came out of the bylaw department many years ago, and it went to Parks. Parks is presently utilizing it. It's up for, for well, to be honest, it's a useful life. It's we did put some money into it, so I just don't want to release it to be honest. With but you. what is it, Julian? The, the sport track. It's a, a, the Ford. Um, so it's a pickup truck, a small pickup, small okay. pickup, four door, small pickup. All right. It thank is. you. Uh, wheel loader with plow. Again, uh, that's the, the large case loader. We use it for construction. We use it for plowing in the winter months as well. It's got a blade and a wing on it too. Okay. And then the uh, the last one, of course, is the sewer flusher truck. I, I just worked out some quick numbers here. It's got 60,415 kilometers, so about, and it's 11 years old, so we put about 5,400K on it a year. And it's got 4,235 hours, which is about 385 hours a year. Um, I understand that, you know, it's 11 years old. Are, is it problematic? Are we spending a ton of money on this vehicle? Uh, you just give me one second here. I can tell you what we have spent in the last... Last four or five years, we've had an expenditure of one hundred twenty-three thousand dollars as the, the uh, cost that we've had that uh, contributed cost for that vehicle. And the warranty on this type of vehicle new is what two years? Uh, typically, depending on the powertrain, uh, the transmission can get different warranties. The the engine sometimes you get up to two years, three years. You can get purchase extended warranties, but sometimes they're very costly and not really recommended. The transmission sometimes. Uh, Generally speaking, this is a specialty vehicle, and it would go through, through a, as a bulk purchase type, not bulk purchase, that's a bad word, but it's a specialty vehicle that's all encompassed from the supplier that makes the back truck. But generally speaking, we can get up to a, a five-year uh, warranty on the transmission. And my last question on vehicles, are we working with the county on their purchasing uh, uh, plan to try and save dollars when we purchase vehicles? We have done that with the county in the past. Uh, the savings is not, we get the same discounts whether we go with them together in their package. The problem is, is that many times uh, we have it spec in a different manner than what they have. They have their, uh, for, for their function and how their, their services provided uh, through the county. Uh, typically they would have a highway blade on a vehicle we would have a, a different type of blade so rather we try to take my specifications put it in theirs but the only cost savings would be as well your newspaper cost for advertising and maybe some administration costs uh, but for the vehicle cost whether I go to, to Ford or they go to Ford we're extended the same discount uh, it's uh, that both markets were both municipalities were both government, government bodies Okay, and Giuliano, as in the KPMG report, uh, it was noted that we had a couple of pickup trucks, I believe, uh, uh, in the fleet that weren't getting a thousand kilometers, and I can't remember if it was a year or a month. So when I look at replacing vehicles, have we looked at those vehicles that KPMG speaks to and uh, removing them? Have they been moved in to a regular use, daily use uh, facility? So is that we are not buying a vehicle and we have another one sitting without a thousand K a year on it? The, for, for putting a thousand K on a year, I'll tell you, I'll be looking at that very, very closely and it'd be hard to justify a vehicle that, to, to, to purchase a vehicle with only a thousand kilometers a year, for sure. Absolutely. But the KPMG so report is a year old now. Mm -hmm. So have we looked at that? Do we, have, we, have we looked at that report? Have we identified these vehicles and what are we doing with them? The, the only vehicle that I'm aware of that doesn't, that didn't have as much kilometers, but much more than a thousand, maybe a thousand kilometers a month, 1,500 kilometers a month would be a pickup truck. Uh, 
but not not a thousand kilometers a year. Okay, so a thousand There's kilometers a month, even still, what are we doing with that vehicle? Has it been has it been put into a system that it's used now? So it, it, it will. It is. It is. It's the public works. What 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 had happened is it by virtue of how the staffing were taking because what happened we were getting into vehicle replacements and uh, with asset management we all of a sudden had an influx of two or three vehicles that got replaced in one year and so those vehicles didn't get as much there are some <coughs> forms that we put on very heavy miles on it for road patrols they get a lot of miles on them where one that might get into uh, a different department uh, might not get as much so what we're trying to do is trying to take that vehicle that doesn't get as much kilometers once it's used here and move it into the fleet, see how long we can uh, extend it, if we have to extend it for another year or two. Again, we have a the, uh, we have a plan of when a vehicle would be replaced, but at the same time, it's not looked at that we replace that vehicle because of that plan. We still have to itemize it, look at it, do an analysis, and if we have to push it forward another year, we'll push it forward another year. It's not just because it's written that we have a seven-year replacement on a pickup that we uh, automatically uh, uh, replace it seven years. We'll look at it, and it, it's got to be just a problem to say, hey, no, uh, it needs to be replaced because A, B, C. If it doesn't, then we will. I, I, I will not make that recommendation. So what I would like to see is a report from staff that says if we took our whole fleet, all 180 vehicles or whatever it is, and we pushed every vehicle's replacement plan over by one more year, what is the savings to the rate pair on that? I would suggest it's substantial. You'd have to look at it because it's it's gonna you're gonna if you start moving everything over, uh, there's some vehicles that can, there's some other vehicles, the larger purchase vehicles, the, the larger equipment. It's a it's a different uh, picture when you look at that because it's not something that we can quickly go out and uh, purchase. Many times when we do go out to replace it, it takes another year even before we get it uh, because it takes that long. The process takes that long to get a specialty vehicle. Uh, unless something is just built and it just happens to be luck of the dice that we have it. But when you get to spec a plow truck, you've got the cabin chassis manufacturer, you've got the bodybuilder, the plow manufacturer, and it all takes time. That could take up to, s to six to, to eight months before you see that. By the time you get that process going in the spring, you're lucky to see it in the fall. But if you extend everything by one year, my point is, it's still one year. If it takes six months to get a plow, it's, st it's still going to take six months to get a plow, but if you move it out by one year, you're, st it's still, you're, you're putting one more year of use into that vehicle. Unless it's a vehicle that, you know, you, you guys, you, you keep your maintenance programs and, and, and your records and it's costing an arm and leg uh, to run it, then I, I understand. But if you took every vehicle and, and moved it to one more year in the system, I think that we would see that would be a substantial savings to the rate payer. And whether or not it takes 30 days, three days, or three months, or six months, or a year to get that vehicle, it's all relevant because everything's been moved by one year. I would, there are some vehicles that I would look at and, and seriously look at the whole overall 10 year plan is what we have to do. Uh, I cannot at this point in time recommend that we would just cut block, take everything, move it one, one year without really giving it a further <coughs> analysis of seeing what the, that full impact would be. For the moment in time, I would agree, yeah, it would look like a, a savings. The savings here would be $294,000 $294, impact of taxation for, for this year. That would have to move forward, but we're saying all the other vehicles would have to be pushed forward as well. Uh, but there's some vehicles that I'd have to see how they're coming up to the renewal and, and the maintenance cost that we're <coughs> some of these vehicles of, uh, of work what would that do with maintenance? I know that loader is is getting pretty uh, wore out, if I can say that. The loader in particular that we have uh, that's up here right now for the motor for the for the truck or no, for the, 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 the the front end loader that we have in here okay. with the plow and wing. It's 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 getting pretty wore out. Uh, we've done some extensive repairs in the last year too, and anything can go on it. Um, <coughs> in addition, that when we open up the tires and stuff in, in the brakes, and we the, the gears, the planetary gears, it's uh, it's something that uh, we can push, but then we can get caught into extensive repairs in the thousands of dollars on that vehicle. And again, I have no issue with that vehicle. It's already 11 years old. I understand that, Mr. CEO. Your Worship, I just want to understand. Um, just so I'm clear, uh, to push everything a year, 
certainly as, as uh, the food manager said, there would be a savings for 2018, but that cost would be incurred the next year, and then we would just incur that cost. It would just be one year out, if I understand, and then whatever other vehicles may get added in that in that next year. Am I understanding correctly? No. Or? If we took the whole fleet, George, and we moved it by one year, and whatever that dollar savings in, in this case it's 294000 which is the impact <coughs> on the taxation, but it's almost a million dollars in its entirety. It Whether well, it's coming from reserves, either way it's the taxpayer's money. Reserves, mm -hmm. tax yes. increase, whatever the case may be. We move that by one year. Save and accept any repairs and maintenance extra over and above the standard that we would spend on a vehicle. And we won't know what that is until the end of the year. It's, a, it's an unknown. We just don't know. Um, we essentially save that either $296,000 hard cash in taxation and in its totality a million dollars. That, that money is saved. Now, the next year you go back on the plan and you start to replace vehicles. You never lose that savings. You've, you've got another year. If you, go on, if you own your own vehicle and you decide you're going to wait another year to trade it, You've essentially got another full year out of that vehicle, and if it's paid for, it's cost you nothing. Or if you bought a new one, you've now got that year that you've lost. Okay, I understand. Right? Councillor Belanger. Okay, just for a clarification, though, like, I mean, I, when you first said push it out a year, I thought if, if you normally turn a pickup truck over five years, that you might consider keeping them six years, and then the new one you buy, you keep six years, so that... But forever. Right, but so, so the savings isn't... The, the full, in this case, it's a full year the first time you pull it out. After that, it's it's that one year spread over six years instead of five years. So it's 20% uh, savings or 18 or whatever it is. So one year complete savings yeah. is what we're seeing on paper, and it's now one sixth of the savings, right. sorry, one fifth, because you're spreading it over another year as we move forward. So there's a savings moving forward as well. Okay, uh, Councillor Brighton, and we're going to. Move so it's on. that those savings are dependent upon the vehicle running another year. Absolutely. So if the vehicle doesn't and you have to rent a snowplow to replace the snowplow that's broken or reduce the level of service to the customer, we, don't, we won't know that impact on taxation until the end of the year, right. but it could be devastating. We have asked our staff, who are experts in this field, to come up with their recommendations. We now at, at Council are second-guessing their opinion, and I think at some point we have to defer back to... Let me make very clear, I'm not, I'm not second-guessing the staff's opinion in any way, shape, or form. I'm simply asking if they've looked at other options. That's yep. all I'm asking. And I think without telling you if, yes, if the they plow have broke yes. down, would it be devastating? Worst case scenario, we'd have to buy the new plow earlier and we'd be in the same situation that we're in now. So it wouldn't be devastating. Is there not a lead time for a snow plow? There is. There yeah. is. Chair, I just, well, uh, just to point out, I, you know, I've been in the automotive industry a long time. Uh, UAP Auto Parts uh, runs a, a much larger fleet. They have 600 stores nationally. They have uh, five major DCs. They have a lot of equipment. And a, a few years back, they made the decision instead of turning vehicles over at 100,000, they turned them over at 120,000. That it, it's because the, they don't build vehicles the same as they did five or six years ago. And, and certainly there, there's experts in the field that do all of these, uh, uh, same as insurance, they estimate the life of all these vehicles. And I think we're just asking the question, has there been a change that might allow us to extend our vehicles a little longer that over time will save our taxpayers money on an ongoing basis? That's, uh, that's my understanding of your question. All right, so I'm going to read the motion moved by Councillor Bray, seconded by Deputy My Mayor by Fold. She resolved that the Committee of the Whole recommends to Council that the purchase of the fire rescue truck be included in the 2018 budget for consideration. Madam uh, Deputy Clerk. <coughs> the motion having been read, we'll call for the vote. Councillor Belanger? Opposed. Deputy Mayor by Fold. In favor. Councillor Bray? In favor. Councillor Ego? Opposed. Councillor Smith? Opposed. Councillor Stockwell? Opposed. Mayor Smith? Opposed. The vote is two in favor and five opposed. The motion is defeated. Thank you. All right, we're now moving on to the manager of uh, Beachfront Properties uh, report uh, with respect to fleet purchasing. Now, again, we have uh, an issue here where we have several items on the list. Um, 
I'm going, I, I would like to make uh, the suggestion that we refer this back to staff to look at uh, uh, more options, pushing this out, longer life of vehicles, whatever it might be, and bring that back to council. Is there anyone willing to move that or second that? You're going to move that for me, Deputy? I'm actually not. Um, <laughs> I actually have, have, have a question, if I could. Go um, ahead. Yeah. Is that not what you already do? Every year you look at these vehicles yeah. and you determine if they can make it another year or not? Well, we look at the vehicles here. This is what the recommendation that that I brought forth for uh, from for drafting. Uh, if if the council would like me to relook at revisit it, um, there are certain items that from one to nine that will be revisited, I believe, through the beachfront board uh, stuff. But the remaining equipment uh, is something that I was bringing forth. That's right. And just further to that. I'm understanding it that if you could extend it, you, you don't look at it and say it's eight years, it's, that's what it's written in my book, it says eight years, so I have to do it. You look at them and if you can already go another year, you're already doing it. Well, we're looking at that, but at the same time, we're looking at what's coming up too. Right. And it's a slippery slope to, if we, if, if there's one ready to go and it's going, and you know, you, you, you can always make something last a little bit longer, but you're taking a chance. And if it goes, when you're talking large specialty equipment, you just can't replace it. You, you're, you're, you're in trouble because you just can't go and buy one off a lot like a, a light vehicle that's a pickup truck. So with the specialty vehicles, it's a different animal, if I can say it that way. Um, but when, when you're coming to looking at the replacement of vehicles, we're, we're, you got to look at the forecast too. We, if, if we're looking at pushing the fire truck to another year, there's half a million right there. And you start pushing a few more things, you're gonna get to a, a snowball effect if we don't, if we're not careful. So, we're, so at the same time, when I am looking at the fleet, I am trying to look at the future and trying to balance it so we don't have a year that all of a sudden we have $5 million opposed to one. We try to balance that out so that we can uh, be, make it reasonable that we don't have a lump sum uh, expenditure all of a sudden that, that we're confronted with and, and now it's come to a point that uh, the maintenance is, is beyond what we can uh, what it's worth. Thank you. No, no, we, we're, we're, we're not going to, we could be here all night bantering back and forth. I guess the dilemma we face now is we've got a list of vehicles and uh, do we want to separate them or do we want to vote on this motion as a whole? If we vote on the motion as a whole, it either all passes or it all fails. Or do we vote on each independent vehicle? Deputy Mayor by Fulci. Um, again, we have staff to make a determination for these vehicles. For us to sit around this table and determine which department's specific vehicle, I, again, I think we're overstepping. Deputy Mayor, I think councils for many, many years and many, many communities have debated whether or not they'll buy a new fire truck or a new sand sucker or a new pickup truck or whatever the case may be. That's our job. I, I support going with the entire Thank you. Thank you. Any other? Uh, sorry, Councillor Eagle, you had your hand up. I was just wondering. Uh, you mentioned about and through uh, uh, and uh, pardon me, Mr. Dooney here, that maybe you should take it back and take one more crack at this and just see what is actually needed, and we could go from there. So I recommend we defer it. So someone to move that. You did. You moved it. Someone to second that. All right. <coughs> So moved by Councillor Ego, seconded by Councillor Stockwell. Resolved it be sorry, be it resolved that committee of the whole refer item five N back to staff for further review. Questions or comments? Mr. CAO. Thank you, uh, Your Worship. Just with respect to the review, um, if 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 council could be more specific with respect to what you're asking staff uh, to do, that might be helpful when we go back and, and undertake the review. So uh, I'll be willing to take a stab at that and, and anyone else can add to this. I think we need to look at the, the uh, purchasing poly as a policy as a whole uh, and uh, pushing that out completely one year, so for all vehicles. Uh, there's always going to be an exception, I understand that. If we've got a vehicle that is uh, costing us thousands and thousands of dollars a year to maintain, then obviously we need to look at replacing that. We could have a vehicle that could be 10 years old and well maintained is costing us very little to maintain. So the policy to move it all by one year, uh, I think is something I would like to see staff look at. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll open the floor for anyone to add to that. Sorry, Juliana, did you want to speak to that? I would want to just add, if you can give me some clarification <coughs> there. 
some vehicles that have been deleted that we were looking at trying to get from the vehicles that were coming out of the fleet to make the secondary pool. Some of those vehicles that I have on that list is for, for that. So okay, now we have the secondary pool to help supplement some of the summertime needs that we have. We don't want to change that. If you've got vehicles that you can use instead of buying new vehicles out of the fleet currently. But those are vehicles that we have on the schedule to be replaced now. Okay. So if I don't replace those, now I'm back to square one now, what do I do with these vehicles that I require? So I think once we see what the impact is of pushing all our vehicle replacements by one year, I think that will then give plan council a clearer picture of what that savings is uh, and or what that cost may be. And then of course we'll have to factor in those other vehicles. So when that report comes back, you want to be, make sure you speak to that as well. Councilor Smith? Just a, a couple of quick questions if I may through, the through you to the treasurer. Um, how much of this is in the budget already? The, the uh, full um, report, yeah. all of this is in the budget presently. It is all in the budget. So we're not adding anything to the budget that we, yeah. we see here. It's in at 2.16 right yes. now. Yes, it's already included. Okay. And what do we do with these old vehicles? Do we resell them, scrap them? What do we do? No, we, they'll go to an auction and we'll try to get the best bang we can for that vehicle. But right now the light vehicles coming out of the fleet will remain. To, to supplement these, uh, the, the vehicles that are in the list there, uh, they have been, the ones that we were able to delete or hold off, we, we deferred them. The other three or four vehicles, the light vehicles, were to create the secondary pool to help accommodate the needs right. that the town has for uh, the summertime. Okay. All right, are you clear then, uh, Julianne? Yes, Good, George. All right. Uh, so, uh, you've heard the question. Madam Deputy Clerk. We'll call for the vote. Uh, Councilor Belanger? In favor. Deputy Mayor Bifolci? Opposed. Councilor Gray? Opposed. Councilor Eagle? In favor. Councilor Smith? In favor. Councilor Stockwell? In favor. Mayor Smith? In favor. The vote is five in favor and two opposed. The motion is carried. Thank you. All right, moving on to item number six, item for future meetings. We have uh, no new items at this time. And uh, the next uh, is closed session. The Director of Economic Development and Tourism uh, here with our solicitor uh, to speak to council uh, with respect to the property on Main Street. So we will take a uh, five minute quick break and then come back uh, and go into closed session.
Moved by Councillor uh, Stockwell, seconded by Councillor Smith. Resolved that pursuant to section 239E and F of the Municipal Act 2001 as amended, the next portion of the Committee of the Whole meeting of November 21st, 2017, be closed to the public to discuss matters relating to litigation or potential litigation and related to advice that is subject to solicitor client privilege. Madam Deputy Clerk. With the motion having been read, we'll call for the vote. Councillor Belanger? In favor. Deputy Mayor Repulti? In favor. Councillor Bray? In favor. Councillor Ego? In favor. Councillor Smith? In favor. Councillor Stockwell? In favor. Mayor Smith? In favor. The vote is seven in favor and zero opposed. The motion is carried. Thank you.
report as soon as the clerk's ready. Okay. So uh, just coming out of closed session, do a rise and report with respect to, with respect to our closed session. Uh, we uh, received uh, some uh, information from uh, legal counsel with respect to a Main Street property and uh, we have uh, had good uh, fulsome discussion uh, with respect to this and uh, given some direction uh, uh, to legal counsel and, and the staff as well. And staff, we're all clear on uh, the direction? Fulsome discussion, I have a question. Uh, so I have a motion moved by Councillor Stockwell, seconded by Councillor Eagle, resolve the Committee of the Whole confirms the direction provided to the Director of Economic Development and Tourism and Jay Johnson of Aird Burles LLP in closed session regarding the status of the Main Street property matter. Questions or comments? Um, Deputy Clerk. The motion has been read. We'll call for the vote. Councillor Belanger? In favour. Deputy Mayor Bifolci? Opposed. Councillor Bray? Opposed. Councillor Eagle? In favour. Councillor Smith? In favour. Councillor Stockwell? In favour. Mayor Smith? In favour. The vote is five in favour and two opposed. The motion is carried. Thank you, and this meeting is adjourned. That's very good.